I have a question. If you could have a quirk that could turn you into the most attractive person on the planet and simultaneously give you the ability to turn others to stone, would you want it? Well, that's a question for Izuku Midoriya because in this video, Izuku's gonna be having just those powers. I know the title and thumbnail don't really do too much to explain that, but let's be honest, you clicked on this video for the thumbnail and trust me, it's gonna have a lot to do with the thumbnail. So ladies and gentlemen, strap in because today's video is gonna be an absolute blast. Well, for me to record and for you to listen to because I'm not gonna lie, I think that this is one of my most lighthearted and funny series I've done in a while. So if you're a fan of those kind of videos, then trust me, you're gonna love this. And if you're driving, doing your homework or something, dude, this is gonna be perfect for you. It's gonna be an absolute banger, I promise. And if it's not, well then, um, here's a fortune cookie, I guess. But like with every other YouTuber, leave a like, subscribe, do all that normal YouTube stuff, and enjoy. We pick up our story the day of Izuku's birth. Now, the way that I'm thinking about this, I'm about to paint the picture perfectly. All right, you guys know that first episode of My Hero Academia, how it shows the glowing baby and like the dad just being like, what? All right, Deku is gonna be born something very, very similar to that, but not exactly the same. This dude is gonna have a glow from straight up aura. That's what Deku's gonna be glowing from. Straight up aura. This man is gonna be a perfect baby. And I cannot stress that enough. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen Psyche, but if you have and you know who Teruhashi is, then this dude is basically gonna be like the male version of Teruhashi. It's gonna be hilarious, the interactions. And um, just to let you guys know, this what if is completely gonna be more of a joke it's not really meant to be taken seriously. I mean, for crying out loud, this version of Deku is gonna be having the powers of Boa Hancock. He's gonna be based off of her, off of Daniel Park from Lookism, off of Teruhashi from Psyche. I'm basically just grabbing the trope of the good looking character and just smashing it into one, giving it to Deku, cause why not? And just calling it a day. I thought it would be an absolutely hilarious thing to write. And Let's be honest, a lot of you guys used to love all of my ship videos that I used to do. While I'm still not gonna go crazy like I used to do just cause like I have different, you know, morals now and I'm kind of an adult, which makes it really weird if I was to go into detail with that stuff. It is just gonna be a good fun, like um, a story that I'm gonna be telling today. So I'm really excited for this. Sorry I haven't been he uh, making videos in a while, but you know, it is what it is. Anyways, so. This is how everything's going to be going. The way that I imagine Izuku's childhood running in this story is basically the moment that this dude is born, he is just perfect. The perfect little adorable baby. He has so much glow just from the fact that he is so adorable. Like, if you saw this kid, you would be jealous of their baby. Like, you'd be holding your baby that you just had that you love more than anything in the world. You'll see this baby and you'll be like, oh, wow, I wish that was my baby. Like, that's literally the kind of thought that would run through your head, right? But point being, as Izuku's growing up, up until he turns four years old, this kid would be so unbelievably good looking that anytime that Inka would be walking around like in the grocery store and Izuku would be inside of like the cart sitting there, people would literally walk up to her and be like, whoa, is your baby a model or something? And she would constantly get offers being like, hey, could your kid model for like this? And it'd be people like Target, like Walmart, like, you know, like place like H&M, like it'd be like from the kids section they would want izuku to go up and like pose for the pictures that they take of the clothes and inko would actually eventually end up giving into that i mean finally hisashi doesn't have to work if izuku was to do this so he would do this and from just this alone izuku would literally be set for life and if you think about it a little bit they're kind of pimping their kid out but you know hey I'm not one to judge, man. Get your money however you gotta get it. But all I'm saying is that's exactly how Izuku's childhood would go. And anytime this kid would go to a park or like she would walk him around, bro, the little girls in the other like uh ca like carriages, like the, the little carts that we would use to get pushed around, we were like babies, they would literally break their necks to look at Deku, which I just thought of right now. It'd be hilarious. But point being eventually izuku makes his way towards meeting katsuki bakugo right now when izuku met bakugo bakugo instantly was like whoa like why does he look like that he'd be like shy he'd be like why is there like a slight glow coming off of him because he's literally seeing it visually and you know at first he was like you know this kid's all right i guess it might be his quirk he would think but after a couple of days of hanging out with him and going outside of the park, he would see that everybody would love Izuku, bro. 
everybody likes this kid everyone thinks he's the best and bakugo just hated it he was like huh how dare this kid think that he's better than me like those are the thoughts that were going in katsuki's head now as soon as preschool started bro don't even get me started on the kind of op behavior that this man bakugo would on would be on because the way that deku's powers are essentially gonna work is if you feel love lust or any sort of admiration or attraction towards izuku izuku's quirk is basically gonna have the ability to turn you into straight up stone his quirk is essentially gonna be the love love fruit or the meta meta no me which is you know something that uh from the one piece world just because i figured i mean i can't just make this guy look good and like be good at fighting which you know he is gonna be but i also gotta give him a really really cool quirk for this world and i thought like medusa something like that'd be pretty cool when i finally realized boa freaking hancock it would literally fit perfectly right so i just had to do it so here's what i'm thinking happens when izuku finally makes it to preschool everybody would be enthralled with his looks they always want to play with him they always fight to get a seat next to izuku and you guys know how like when we were kids and like in middle this this applies more to middle school and no nah, that's not true it definitely applies to not not preschool but like let's say elementary school when izuku finally does get to elementary school like i don't know if you guys had this happen but me personally when i was going to school like and i had like my little childhood crushes bro my crushes would be like the only reason that i liked going to school just so i could see them again you know what i mean like that that's the kind of like stuff that the characters in this world would literally be doing to izuku like they're going there and they're so excited to go to school like they literally go to bed early mind you you know how when you're a kid like you don't want to brush your teeth and that applies to girls too don't lie don't lie bro everyone and their mom has like really nice teeth because they all don't want to like be bad in front of izuku you know what i mean and it's just to the point where this dude has like an army of like like an, a harem of straight dudes girls like everything bro just the teachers love this kid bro they give him treats they always let him answer any questions if he doesn't know they they treat him extra nice than everybody oh and um you know when he gets to middle school he's definitely gonna have like have you have you guys ever had it where like you had a teacher that like low-key seemed like a perv like he would be extra nice to the girls for some reason that's gonna happen but with like the girl teachers so this dude deku is just gonna be having like the weirdest weirdest life seriously eventually zuku would figure out what his quirk is and on this particular day he would go to class and his classmates would literally volunteer to be turned into stone by his quirk this dude's classmates literally offered to help him train with it and the teacher would be like oh you can turn me into a stone like i don't mind izuku i can't wait for you to become a hero and he'd be like but i, I mean of course if that's what you want to be right izuku and Deku would look at them and be like, yeah, I'm going to be a hero just like All Might. And he would get excited and everyone's like, yeah, All Might's the best. And like, bro, everything this dude says, they all are just like, they're, they are, they are a bandwagon for this man. I was about to use a different expression, but like they are on this man 24 seven, right? Like it's bad. But eventually, Izuku would finally make its way towards elementary school. In elementary school is when his life would slowly start changing. Because at this point, he doesn't have to do modeling anymore because his family's already set. So now he pretty much just declines everything because he wants to keep a low profile. I mean, at the end of the day, he knows how good he looks, but he doesn't like acknowledging it just because it's like he's he's a he's a very humble boy and the reason that he is actually humble is gonna just be due to the fact that inko midori is his mom i mean like come on now bro you don't get any more humble than mama izuku you know so yeah she's teaching him great values and hey ah she's just so proud of his son he's like you have all the girls coming for you you know what i mean and izuku just sitting there he's like yeah yeah and um you know eventually elementary school izuku gets an interest in playing soccer he freaking becomes the team captain not even because he's the best player but just due to the fact that izuku is um whatchamacallit is just good looking so they want him to be the captain like whenever he would go to opposing schools to play the cheerleaders would literally start cheering for the other team this is the kind of buffoonery that is literally going on in izuku's life and eventually when izuku makes it to middle school izuku gets really really tall like this dude gets a crazy growth spurt and now this dude is like five foot eleven in middle school like he is tall this dude all of his clothes fits him perfectly like izuku is a hunk at like literally like 13 years old like this dude is growing into himself right and all the girls love this dude eventually he does get a 
very beautiful taste for basketball which i mean come on now like hey hey all i gotta ask is are you guys keeping up with the warriors because honestly i think that they have some pretty good chances this year i don't know about you guys but hey that's just me but point being this is where we're gonna turn into a bit of a slice of life and then we'll finally get to the story who cares about that but point of view we're gonna switch right to the perspective of izuku as he gets gets to school just because like bro i have to cover a school day an entire school day minimum at least a couple school days in this video all right, all right, let me get into my storytelling character. <clears throat> Izuku, Izuku, wake up, Izuku. Huh? Um, what is it? It's time for school. Right. Izuku would get up as he makes his way towards his uh, bathroom, only to clean his face with a facial cleanser. Then this dude proceeds to go out to the kitchen and be greeted by the most beautiful breakfast he's ever seen. Oh yeah, a part of his quirk is that he doesn't gain weight. This dude can eat whatever he wants, doesn't have to work out, and he's in shape. That's like another benefit is quirk, because like, why not? He's like literally perfect because of his quirk, right? Honestly, pause for a second. I was going to go down the trope of Izuku having a quirk that was unusable just due to the fact that like he wasn't attractive or like not not attractive but like he's not good looking enough for people to, for him to turn people into like the love being because no one has lust no one has love and no one has admiration other than you know obviously his mother so what I was gonna think of going down is like more of like a Daniel Park route where like he's the bullied kid that eventually like has like a massive glow up and he gets like super confident and his whole life changes because he goes on a training arc or something like that. But I was like, man, get out of here with that weak stuff. We gonna give our protagonist everything from the jump because you know, why not? You know, like that's what I was thinking. I was just like, nah, let's just do it this way. But anyways, going back to the story. Izuku would put his shoes on and eventually his mom would drive him to school. Once Izuku would end up arriving, just like usual, everybody there would be like standing nearby Izuku being like, Hey Izuku, how was your day yesterday? And Izuku just smiles at them and they're like, Oh, I can't believe he smiled at me. And then we have Bakugo like in the corner just looking like, Damn Deku, he's not all that. He just looks good. His quirk isn't even that strong either. I don't know why people glaze him so much. And his friends are just looking at him. They're like, yeah, Bakugo. I mean, he's not that good looking. O only a little more than you. And Bakugo just looks at them and he can see that his henchmen are straight staring at Deku too. This dude starts gritting his teeth and just walks off. Being like, Come on. And his friends go with him. Izuku eventually would make his way to class where once he would end up getting there, Izuku would take the seat right next to the teacher because of the fact that it literally became a problem. Like before every single class would start, his his students like around him would proceed, uh, classmates are students, his classmates around him literally would fight to see who would get the two seats next to him. Like I don't know if you guys, obviously you guys have seen Naruto, you guys remember that one scene where Sakura and Ino were straight up fighting to sit next to Sasuke? that would go down and mind you it's not just the girls it's the guys but unfortunately the guys kind of gave up just due to the fact that i mean like anytime that they tried the girls just go crazy and they like rip them to shreds like the classic anime trope where like girls get mad and like the guys can't do anything about it yeah that's literally what happens so izuku eventually making his way towards the seat he would end up going to the teacher and be like, so what are we learning today, teach? And then the teacher just looks at him and goes, well, it depends. What do you want to learn, Izuku? I really haven't thought up of a lesson plan yet. And Izuku goes, oh, you know what would be cool? If we got to learn about pirates. So Izuku in that moment proceeds to basically get the teacher to put one piece on. It would be this moment that everybody in the in the classroom just starts watching this show and they're all having an incredible time. And Deku would just be like, dude, that's so cool. He's going to be the king of the pirates, which is kind of like being the number one hero, right? And everybody just starts agreeing with him, even though, you know, that's not actually the case. But like they literally just love being yes men to this guy. And Izuku right after this would have some of his friends from the basketball class or basketball class from his uh, from his basketball team come up to him and be like, hey, Izuku, come on, we got to go. We're going to be late. We're going uh, to an away game today. And Izuku's like, oh, right, to the uh, to, to play for the championship. And his classmates are like, yeah, you better make sure you make all your shots today, Captain. As from here, Izuku would smile, be like, gotta go, guys. And everybody's all like, bye, Izuku, bye, Izuku. The second the door closes, everything is just like, huh, he's gone. And the class just goes back to like learning and everything's just boring. And Bakugo just sitting there like being like, 
I hate him so much. As from here, Izuku would make his way onto the bus. Him and all of his classmates are talking. They're literally just talking about this week's Shonen Jump. They're all having a blast, you know, just teenagers being teenagers. And eventually they would end up arriving to the other team's school. Once Deku gets there and he walks straight through those doors, everybody on the opposing team just looks at him and they're like, who is this guy? Some of them are just like, huh, he's just good looking. That doesn't mean he can play good. But like some of the dudes there, they're like, oh, my girlfriend's here. I wonder if she's and they look over and their girlfriends are literally staring at this dude, Deku. Like, bro, their, their saliva is dripping out of their mouths. Hearts have formed in their eyes. Seeing this, the opposing team just instantly hates Deku. But they can't fa they can't fail to admit that this dude is a hunk. But from here, Izuku would check the ball up and immediately one of the people on the other team quickly shoulder bumps Deku, realizing that this dude is not only just good looking, but he's built like a tank. Because this dude Deku just took it like a champ and then proceeded to dribble the ball down through the legs, do a step back and proceed to drain a shot in the other team's tallest player's face. From here, everyone in the crowd be like come on like let's go number uh number 21 because you know that's the day of my birthday let's go number number 21 and so izuku's just there he smiles at the crowd the cheerleaders are all like uh one two th uh uh one two three four izuku something number one like they would just make like a dumb chant and then like izuku's just sitting there smiling like a goofball like this dude is just having the time of his life like he's just enjoying life at this point man like that's all izuku's doing like he doesn't even mean to take other people's girls he just does it by accident you know and um right after the game would be over izuku would go up to the opposing team's players and just dap them up being like hey guys that was an incredible game and the other guys are like wow it's an honor like you know they, they literally lose all their anger like they're like oh like seeing him up close it's just and you know they just start admiring this dude izuku smiles at them and he's like hope i get to play against you guys again bye and he just walks out and mind you this dude izuku has never once taken advantage of the fact that all of these girls like him izuku's not like that like if he was to like a girl and see that he, they genuinely like him and you know their personalities match then maybe but like izuku's not a womanizer he's not a player he's none of those things he's genuinely just like the coolest sweetest dude and honestly bro's a w man but point being that is a typical school day for izuku everyone is constantly all over this man and you know what's crazy you would think izuku after having to deal with this every single day would just get tired of these guys and hate them but like he doesn't he literally does not get tired of it because well he got used to it at first he did get slight annoyances whenever his life would be different from others but eventually he just learned to accept it you know with a quirk come some back draws and unfortunately for him his backlash can't be something else other than literally this so if he has to draw attention then he'll draw attention after all his favorite hero all might draws attention and that's not a bad thing right so that's all that izuku would be thinking eventually would come a day when izuku would make his way outside of the class and finally a bunch of guys whose girlfriends literally broke up with them because of the fact that they like had massive crushes on izuku went up to deku and all like seven of them proceeded to ask him out and give him flowers and chocolates and be like here's a gift i was thinking about you when i saw this and they give him straight up hoodies and stuff and izuku just starts like smiling and he's like oh thanks um uh i can't go out with you guys i'm sorry and you know like they're like it's okay zuku like um we understand and they're like well you can still have our gifts and izuku's just sitting there smiling and looking at them and being nice and dude the boyfriends are literally looking at izuku and just being like ah, who does this guy think he is not only did he take our girlfriends but he thinks he's too good for them we'll teach him a lesson mind you these guys don't like izuku and this dude is in middle school at this point so as izuku would be making his way home one of them would come up to izuku and be like hey buddy uh you think i can take a picture with you 
and then from here like he poses and he's like ah sun's too bright you think we can take a picture closer to there and so he walks over there with the guy and you know izuku just asking him he's like hey you know i've never met you what's your name and this guy just like he izuku has a bad feeling he kind of knows what's up but he's pretending not to just so we can catch these guys off guard because he's like bro i'm tired of having to fight these dudes when i haven't done anything to them like i didn't do it on purpose you know like at this point izuku had to learn how to fight like there was no if and or buts about it so as izuku was dragged into this alleyway these guys would basically stand there and they have like crowbars one of them straight up has a knife and another one has brass knuckles on him a couple of them are just trying to fight him with their fists because they think that their other friends are going too far you know which they are but point being they're standing there and they're basically telling izuku that if he wants to get out of here unharmed with this perfect little face then he's gonna have to get down on the ground and grovel like a little dog but izuku from here just looks down at the ground doesn't say a single thing and proceeds to take his phone out from here this man proceeds to call an ambulance and goes on and they're like hey why'd you call them are you doing it so that they could pick you up after we're done with you and izuku just looks up and goes nah i called him for you as he proceeds to grab the bat out of one of the dude's hands hit him with the grip of it on his on his uh under his jaw which causes one a couple of his teeth to go flying as he wouldn't throw it to the ground rush at the dude with the knife break his wrist so that it, he can't hurt him anymore and then jump on the wall doing a double jump on it before then landing on one of the guy's necks and in a wrestler like fashion this dude proceeds to spin before throwing him on the ground catching a kick from one of the guys who threw it at him the other guy comes in with a brass knuckle and hits him straight in the side of the head causing a little blood to start leaking out and izuku just looks at him saying that hurt as he grabs him by the arm tucks both of them together slams them on the ground and then the last guy who had pushed him into the alleyway that dude just runs away leaving all of his friends beat up in the alleyway izuku from here just goes on to pretty much tell the ambulance that these guys were trying to jump him he's not sure why but he had to beat them up and you know like luckily for him the the luckily for him the ambulance was uh it was a gay dude it was a gay yeah 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 let's go i was about to say it's girl but like you don't usually get girls in the ambulance so luckily for izuku it was literally some gay dude that was just so attracted to him right and um like he just looks at deku and he's like ah like he's just like it's just funny right but izuku gets out of it scot-free just because like the dude likes him you know what i mean like it it's it's just a funny joke oh and by the way if you got offended by me like making a joke about gay people get over it <laughs> like boo i don't care anyways um continuing on with the story we are basically going to now jump into izuku on his like on the day of the sludge villain incident right at this point izuku has had a bunch of years to learn how to fight through extensive different kinds of martial arts because like hey one day his quirk might not work and you know that's actually really smart like people out there who can cancel quirks probably or have some abilities that are going to render him useless what if a villain doesn't like him you know what i mean like it, it, it's completely a possibility not every dude is going to be a attracted to him you know like they're not all a little zesty but um the point is that izuku is preparing for you know different situations making sure that he's ready for combat whenever it calls for it right and so izuku would pretty much put him up in a perfect place eventually the day would come where bakugo just got so tired of izuku i mean the dude's dealt with it for years and he's always wanted to do something but izuku never leaves class late so he never has an opportunity to try to like come up to him and like push him around or anything because all the girls are always with him and anytime that he tries to get near the girls are like what are you doing get away from izuku you know so this is finally his day Deku would be would have been like a little busy like jotting down some of the notes from the hero attack that happened earlier and like Mount Lady and all the stuff that happened but what's funny is the cameras literally turned to Izuku and they took pictures of him as well this dude got caught up in the accident and he became bro literally not even uh Mount Lady's like incident of her capturing this hero the villain became the big thing it was how handsome this middle school student is and like girls all around the world saw this thing and they were they're like all loving him this dude is an internet sensation like there's fake tinder pages of this kid and some people fall for it which is just like the funniest part but point being 
Izuku's running a little bit late. So as Izuku's packing all of his things up to class, Bakugo walks up to him and goes, So, you signed up for UA2. What are you going to do? Make villains fall in love with you? I don't think that plan's going to work out for you too well, Deku. As Izuku looks towards the direction of Bakugo and goes, Yeah, might not, but I mean, it's never too bad to try. Plus... I heard you're going into UA too, it's gonna be kinda cool having someone else there with me. And Bakugo just looks at him, cause you know, Deku's not scared of him and he doesn't view him as a threat cause he knows like, you know, if he tries anything, he will whoop him. But at this point, Bakugo's just like, yeah, everyone does seem to like you. Bakugo's lackeys at this point both close the doors to the classroom and lock them. As Bakugo would say, you know, Deku, for years you've been really stuck up thinking that you're so much better than me. But you know what? I've been itching to kick you down a couple notches. As from here, Izuku blows an explosion in his hand and Izuku asks, So you're gonna jump me, Bakugo? Really? How do you think that's gonna play out for you? Izuku points one finger towards the direction of each of his lackeys, shooting love pistols at them as hearts would come out of his hand and both of them would turn into petrified pieces of stone. Izuku from here, turning to Bakugo would say, so what, you're gonna try to fight me alone now? And Bakugo would say, <laughs> you think I needed those guys? They were just gonna be doing a little bit of lookout to make sure that the teachers aren't here. But since I got you here, I might as well! As he throws a big right hook and Deku dodges it saying, predictable, catching his hand as he slams him onto the ground and says, you know Bakugo, you're powerful, but it doesn't really matter considering that I know your fighting style. From here, Bakugo gets back up, throwing another explosion at Deku, and Deku from here has to jump back as Izuku in this moment hides behind a desk, picks it up and throws it at Bakugo, who just blows it to pieces, as Izuku would rush towards the direction of Bakugo, holding his arms in front of him, rushing at him, as he would grab him by like the waist and slam him onto the ground. From here, Bakugo throws a point blank explosion at the direction of Izuku's face. And as that happens, Deku actually does get a scuff mark on there, which he has to put a bandit on later. But immediately after that, Izuku grabs, grab, uh, no, like grips his fist as hard as he can and hits Bakugo square in the temple, knocking him out. Since, you know, at this point, Bakugo hasn't had any real hero training and it's just what he, you know, sort of knows. So this is like the weakest version of Bakugo. And this is a trained version of Izuku who managed to keep the damage from Bakugo to a minimal degree because he studied Bakugo and he understands. Okay, someone like Bakugo, I can't use my love beam on. I have to actually beat them physically. So that's what he did. He knocked dude out. He then proceeded to unlock the door, unturn them to stone and tell them to take him home. From here, Deku just walked out and made his way home using the path of the sludge villain. From here, what would pretty much end up taking place is the sludge villain would come out of the sewage as Izuku's walking, not none the wiser, and as soon as the sludge villain sees him, he's like, hey kid, give me your butt, as he sees Izuku, and he's like, F wow, I can't believe I have so much luck. I can't believe I get to inhabit such a handsome body. <laughs> Give it up, kid. There's nothing you can do. As he would as he would proceed to start like covering Izuku, but in this moment, Izuku would straight up just be just like mouth the word. Like, or he wouldn't mouth the word, but the, the sludge would start like creeping up on his leg, and Izuku would just look at the sludge villain straight blowing a kiss at it. As the sludge villain itself turns into stone, and as All Might finally comes out. He could see that half of this kid's legs are turned to stone uh, because the sludge villain is on him. And then Izuku says, oh, All Might, it's you. He starts fangirling and All Might is just like, kid, did you do this? And Izuku's like, yeah, sorry, I used my cork on him because he was trying to take over my body. That would have been bad, right, All Might? And All Might just looks at him and he's like, wow, kid, your quirk is very powerful. You can turn villains to stone. That's going to be very useful for uh, for taking out very powerful villains. And Izuku goes, yeah, mostly for female villains, probably. But I got lucky this time around. As All Might just looks at Izuku and be like, well, uh, have a good day, citizen. And Izuku looks at him and goes, I will. You too, All Might. But before you go, can you sign my autograph? He does it. And from here, uh, Izuku unturns the villain to, from stone and like then it turns to sludge followed by All Might throwing a punch at it splattering it everywhere and taking it back to where it belongs meaning Bakugo never gets trapped by the sludge villain and Izuku is just chilling on his own merit like he doesn't have to do anything right so from this point forward Izuku would pretty much be free to just make his way home and have a normal 
couple of 10 months before the UA training would start. Izuku realized that Bakugo probably could have beat him up that day if he wasn't a bit more careful. So Izuku from this day forward took his training way more seriously and decided that since if, if, if his quirk ever manages to not work on a villain, he's going to need to have some very serious training, uh, some very serious hand-to-hand -hand combat skills in order to take out some of these villains and he'll probably even need a real gun. So Izuku over the course of these next 10 months would start working on basically uh, learning how to be a marksman, going to different shooting ranges where people would be so nice to him, giving him free bullets, being like, oh, I'll train you. And like so many people would offer to train this guy and be like, hey, you know, what's the secret? Like, how do you look so good? And, you know, Izuku would give them tips on like improving their physical like appearance and stuff like that. And so that's how Izuku would pretty much learn. Like that's what he did with martial arts. Like a bunch of people were super willing to teach him because like, they believe that he could have possibly gotten them to like fame if you know people saw that this kid can fight really good and he's really attractive so we'll bring in the big bucks so that's why izuku was so good at fighting and after these 10 months would finally be over izuku would be an absolute beast when it comes to marksmanship this dude is like practically on the same like you know a couple tiers below snipe right i think that's a fair comparison so and oh, not, not just that, but his physical hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff like would have definitely gotten better. Izuku would have been prone to actually learning to use a bow staff, which is something that Izuku loves actually using himself. And Izuku also isn't against using some brass knuckles every now and then just to inflict that little extra bit of damage. But point finally being that Izuku is now more than prepared to take the UA entrance exam. But unfortunately for Izuku, these villains are going to be robots. So we're going to have to be seeing how this plays out. But that's for future Zether to decide because I'm kind of done recording. I got stuff to do. Catch you guys later. Bye. Picking off the story where I last left off, we immediately begin with the events of the UA entrance exam. Now, in this timeline, obviously, Zuku doesn't get one for all, which means that he's not exactly going to be equipped with the tools to, like, straight up one-shot a robot, and that's going to be very, very bad for him, because unfortunately, robots don't exactly feel attraction, love, or lust. So, dude's going to be in for a world of pain. So, now, we're going to be switching to the point of view of, well, Izuku. All right, this test was pretty easy. What, what's after this? Immediately after the test would be done being taken, President Mike would go onto the stage and he would proceed to explain to everybody what's going to go down, explaining the one pointer, two pointer, three pointer, and ultimately zero pointer. After all of this would be said and done, Izuku would realize that he is not in a very good position. Izuku would simply think to himself, dang it, this is probably the worst outcome for me. He would just think to himself that he just needs to get a couple of robots to show that he's competent and he's sure that he can get into UA that way. I mean, it's not like every hero's quirk is exactly tailored to facing off against some robots. I mean, at the end of the day, he his quirk is very, very situational. So, Izuku making his way towards the outside section where the zero pointers are at, Izuku couldn't help but notice that all of these girls were staring at him. But on this particular day, Izuku was very, very annoyed because it's like, this dude is internally freaking out. And while he's having a not very good day realizing what he's about to have to do, these girls are literally not taking their eyes off of him. However, he does notice one in the front of the classroom who's equally freaking out about as hard as he is. Walking over towards her, Izuku would go on to ask her how she is, and the second that Uraraka lays her eyes on Izuku, her eyes would change from worry to just immediately, like, love struck. It's like love at first sight for Uraraka. She stares at Izuku, and bro, as this dude speaks to her, she literally inches closer to smell bro's breath. Like, that's how into him she is. At this point, Izuku would ask her if she's also nerve struck. And she'd be like, yeah. Yeah, she snaps out of it for a second. She's like, yeah, it's pretty scary. I mean, this is going to determine the rest of our future. But meanwhile, as their conversation is taking place, immediately you would hear President Mike just sat on the intercom being all like, go, go, go. Come on now. This is a hero. Uh, I, don't, I forgot what he said in the original. Something along the lines of, go, what are you waiting for? You know, something like that, which is kind of what happens. And immediately after hearing this, Izuku just, he darts at the at the entrance rushing towards the direction of one um 
one-pointer as izuku clenching his fist knowing that this dude's about to have some brist bruised fist for the next couple of days proceeds to reel his arm back and punch the zero pointer as hard as he can causing the head of it to be slammed into the body itself as izuku would have racked up one point total rushing towards a couple other zero a couple other um robots he would proceed to try doing the same and it would take him a lot more work than the other students with quirks made to handle these robots but ultimately izuku would end up racking up a grand total of 23 robot points before the zero pointer would finally be unleashed now it's at this specific point in time that izuku would notice that the zero pointer had just been unleashed and so seeing everybody run away from it izuku would think to himself that he has no business facing this thing either i mean what's he gonna do shoot a love beam at it that won't work but as izuku would be running away he would overhear the the cries and screams of a, of a recognizable voice izuku turning over to see uraraka his body would just move as he would realize that she's in immediate danger. Izuku rushing towards her direction, making his way there would begin throwing the rubble off of her as the zero pointer would be just about to stomp on them. But in that instant, Izuku grabbing Uraraka would roll with her on the ground, barely evading the zero pointer from crushing them as they would both now be stuck in an alleyway as the zero pointer would be looking down at them and be preparing himself to pretty much stomp them right as this is about to happen the zero pointer would shut down and the test would be concluded as over from here, Araraka seeing that Izuku had helped her, not only had he helped her, but he's still holding on to her, trying to protect her best as he can, would just start swooning over this guy. As Izuku would smile at her, say that it was really no problem, and she would say, uh, yeah, like just trying to play it cool, not showing that she's absolutely head over heels for this kid. As Izuku would pretty much end up leaving her, and he would just make his way home. For the following week, Izuku would be extremely nervous. Not as much as he would be in the original because of the fact that, well, you know, he's not all much protege and he doesn't need to show the world that he's there. But he still is, as much as he hates to admit it, perfect little Izuku. The person that everybody expects to do so well at life, so well at Hero Academy, so well at everything. I mean, seriously, it was exhausting trying to keep this facade up for everybody, but whatever. Eventually, the card would come into the mail and Inko would come rushing into the, through the door, not fat this time around because she never got sad about the fact that Izuku had to grow up getting bullied or any of those things. So, you know, she comes in crying and they both watch the tape together. Immediately, Izuku would be told that he ended up making it into UA and not only that, but he ended up getting the most points out of anybody because not only did he get like 20 something rescue of uh, robot points, but he got 50 rescue points, meaning that he was just a tad bit above Bakugo's actual score and izuku got in number one in the class izuku would be told that they're expecting great great things from him and um that's about it actually i was about to say something else but honestly that's that's really all you could really say anyways eventually after hearing this izuku and his mother inko would make their way towards a pizza shop going to celebrate because you know pizza is izuku's favorite uh favorite food so they would make their way towards a random pizza shop it's like a it's like a um a stone oven right like, like like one of those like real pizzas not like one of those dominoes or uh pizza like normal pizza joints right like it's a real real pizza shop so izuku and his mother end up ordering pizzas and izuku demolishes an entire pizza by himself meanwhile izuku ended up getting a pasta because you know she's not too much of a crazy pizza fan but she is a fan of her lovely izuku it'd be at this moment that hiyashi would finally end up making his way there seeing as he actually was on a bit of a trip helping out a friend who used to do the job that he used to do he would congratulate izuku before sitting down and ordering another pizza which he and izuku would both finish together hisashi eating half and izuku eating the other half you know obviously anyways after this would take place izuku would have his hair ruffled by his dad as the girl waitress that was there would actually be blushing as she's bringing izuku more food and even bring an extra pizza saying uh th this one's on the house as you know a bunch of the girls that were actually there at that pizza place too some with their boyfriends would be staring daggers at izuku like just looking at him izuku smiles at the pizza girl all the girls around her just stare at her with like hatred in their eyes because she's like uh, how dare she talk to him you know and so izuku would proceed to just take that pizza home and eat it later 
Eventually Sunday would come around and on this particular day Deku would have just finished up at the gym. It just so happens though that right next to the gym a couple like let's say a couple of streets down was actually a music store. So Izuku would end up making his way over there going to see if he can maybe pick up an instrument because he's been really really wanting to learn how to play. And so Izuku would make his way there with his hair like wet because he had just finished like working out obviously so sweating. He would be having like a black tank top on on, and he would also be wearing like these um like these white baggy um or these gray gray sweatpants he'd be wearing gray sweatpants and some air force ones because why not and you know he'd also have like a silver chain on him and then he also has like this is like nice little like silver bracelet on his uh on his wrist so as he enters the shop the store owner immediately gets a glimpse of this dude's aura and the second izuku walks in he makes his way to look at the guitar section where he would just start browsing around eventually coming across a pink one picking that one up and asking the store owner if this is a good one the store owner immediately proceeds to tell izuku that it is a good one actually and that if he would like he could actually play um he could actually teach him how to play it for a bit as izuku would sit down and this dude would proceed to start teaching him a couple of things about playing the guitar showing him how to strum it showing him one quick chord and then a, a, a couple of minutes would pass by as izuku would say dude this is so much fun shame it hurts my fingers but i mean i think i'll get over it the store owner would say yeah that's the only problem that you really run into at first but you know if you're willing to go through the pain then i promise it'll all be worth it after hearing that, Izuku proceeds to practice a quick, simple song. I mean, the song has literally two chords. It'd be C and G. So Izuku just sitting there alternating between both of them as he's, you know, just playing the chords and stuff. Just sitting there trying to jam out. Eventually, one girl would end up posting that there's this really cute guy at, you know, let's just say Guitar Center or something like that, right? And so eventually, a bunch of people ended up showing up. And Izuku was sitting there playing this guitar, just trying to figure out how it works. The girls nearby are just sitting there encouraging him. They're like, yeah, it sounds great. It sounds great. Some of them are there and they're like hearing this. And eventually, one specific character would be nearby. This would be Jiro, right? She sees Izuku playing the guitar, walking over towards him wondering what's all the commotion about and the second she lays her eyes on him it's as if her eyes turn into heart eyes she starts doing the same thing that all the girls around him are doing and so jiro realizing that she's doing something way out of character would just smack herself in the face and notice that he's having a bit of issues with the guitar he's doing one thing wrong but since nobody else is willing to tell him that because of the fact that well you know they're all glazing him she walks over to him and says hey i noticed your your technique needs a little bit of work you think i could help you with that izuku looking at her with smile and say thanks i knew something was up but since i kept hearing i was doing a great job i didn't think too much about it she goes on to tell him that he's placing his hands too on the strings so whenever he's playing his hands are slightly touching the court the string below them which is causing the guitar to sound muted so izuku would fix his fingers to be at an angle and immediately he can finally start playing these chords just as intended they now sound a lot better izuku turning towards her would start smiling at her saying that that helped so much thanking her asking him if asking her if there's anything he can do to repay her as she says no it's okay i'm just here to buy some drums after all and you know she's like blushing this whole time just being like ah, why didn't i say take me out or something like that you know she's like why am i thinking this like he's just normal suddenly she turns to the crowd of girls and they all their eyes have turned red but not with hearts with feet with anger you know as they all push jiro out of the store before she can even buy her drums and she's just like what was that all about finally izuku finishes playing and because izuku had attracted such a crowd this shop owner ended up actually getting so many customers on this day that were buying that specific model of guitar so after izuku was done he ended up telling asking the shop owner how much it was gonna be for the guitar and he just told him like dude you can have that for free you brought in so much business to me today he starts like bowing and thanking him and shaking his hand asking if there's any way that he can come back next week by any chance and izuku would just look at him and say i mean if you can teach me sure as the shop owner would be like yeah sorry i couldn't teach you that much just when the store started getting really packed i figured good for business to not ignore your customers right and izuku says i understand 
From here, he would make his way home with his brand new guitar and an amp, by the way, because it was an electric guitar. And so, Izuku making his way back home would end up just sitting there practicing how to play his chords because the next day, he had a huge day waiting for him. His first day of UA High. We begin this beautiful and immaculate day with Izuku making his way straight to Yue. His mom would have basically bid him goodbye and Izuku would get out of the door making his way straight towards the gate of Yue. Izuku immediately takes a map out and would just be like, alright, well, where do I go? And suddenly, he realizes he has absolutely no idea where to go. It would be at this moment that third year girls, seeing that Izuku didn't know where to go, would all immediately volunteer to help this dude get to his class. And so, they would pretty much start acting like they don't know, asking him what year he is, what his quirk is, and all this other stuff. Izuku would say that he can turn people to stone, and they'd be like, that's awesome, you know, like hyping him up. Izuku's just sitting there having a nice conversation, and then eventually he realizes, oh, this is 1A. Thanks for, the, thanks for the chat, guys. I really do appreciate you guys getting me to class on time. And they'd all be like, of course, you know, anytime. As Izuku would make his way inside of the classroom, and instantly, he would be greeted to the side of Ida and Bakugo arguing over something. Izuku sighs, thinking... Some things never change, as from here he would make his way towards the back of the classroom, going to sit down. Instantly, bro, Kaminari, Mineta, like all the girls in the classroom just all look at this dude, and they all instantly fall in love. Mineta would just start crying, and Kaminari would be like, it's not fair. Uh, Kirishima seeing Deku would be like, what a man. And Bakugo would just be gritting his teeth as Ida's looking at this kid being like, that's the one that I saw in the entrance exam. He would walk over to him and introduce himself being like, hey, my name is Tenya Ida. What's yours? Izuku smiles, shakes his hand and says, name's Izuku Midoriya. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you guys. As he would take a seat and just start, you know, looking towards the front of the classroom. Instantly though, instantly mina would go over towards izuku standing in front of the desk and just start trying to flirt with izuku because i don't know i just feel like mina is the type of character to do something like that so she goes over and starts trying to flirt it up with izuku and izuku's being nice to her eventually uraraka walks into the classroom and she just starts being like hey it's you you know and she's like hey thank you so much for saving me during the entrance exam Izuku looks at her and says, oh, don't worry, it really was nothing. I really, I really prolonged our tests, actually, rubbing the back of his head as, you know, she would just look at him and say, well, not really. I could have made him weightless with my quirk. It's called, uh, it's called, um, anti-gravity or well, what's, her, what's her quirk name? Uh, zero, gra it's called zero gravity. Izuku says, you, you gotta be kidding me. That's an incredible quirk. From here, Mina goes on to say, yeah, that's a pretty cool quirk. What do you think about mine? I, I, I have an acid quirk. From here, Suyu gets involved and she's like, what about my quirk, Ribbit? I have a frog. I have a, I have a frog quirk. Uh, or, or, is it a frog? Or, or Suyu, she, yeah, I think it's a frog. Anyways, from here, Izuku goes, so you have all the properties of a frog? That's awesome. Suddenly, Momo shyly would be like, yeah, I have a creation quirk. And, you know, Izuku's like, wait. Does that mean you can make things? You can literally create things that have nothing? And she's like, well, I use the lipids in my body, but essentially, yeah. Izuku would think to himself that that is awesome. He would go on to say that he can't believe how talented the girls of his class are. All of them start blushing, and Izuku in his mind would be like, I shouldn't have said that. Ashramiri would sit back down, and Aizawa walking over towards Izuku would be like, so pretty boy, you think that you can start a whole ride in my classroom just because you look good? Everybody, put these on and meet me outside. But you, I'm gonna need to have a chat with you before everything. As suddenly, everybody else would leave, and Izuku would just be left there with Aizawa, as Aizawa goes on to explain to him that he is not going to be flirting in his classroom, and he doesn't care what his quirk is or how talented he is, he will expel him. Izuku, looking towards the direction of Aizawa, would wonder what his deal is, as he would go on to say that he wasn't flirting, he was being nice, honest, he's never even had a kiss before, as Aizawa would look at him and be like, oh, well, if that's the case, then you better get going. Remember, no second chances. 
As from here, Izuku says thanks, will do, making his way, getting changed, and eventually meeting everybody outside. It'd be at this moment that he would get shoulder checked by Bakugo, who would pretty much go on to tell Izuku that he's been training ever since that day, and if he thinks things are going to be as easy as they were last time, he's going to be in for a world of trouble. From here, Izuku would go on to say that he hopes he's been training, after all, he has too. So, he better have worked at least twice as hard, if not three times, if he wants to beat him. Bakugo gritting his teeth as suddenly, Aizawa making his way outside would toss a baseball at Izuku, going on to pretty much tell him to throw it as far as he can, that this is the first section of the test. Izuku goes on to complete all of the tests, and wouldn't you know it, he would actually get pretty decent scores on everything. Nothing great, he doesn't exactly end up getting one specific score that sets him over the top of everyone else, but at the end of the day, his quirk isn't physical. Everything that he's doing is because he is trained on his physical body as, as hard as he possibly can pushing the human limits to the brink of like how far they can go at this point izuku if i had to compare him to somebody in this world would probably be about staying levels of you know physicality strength speed endurance you know stuff like that and so after everything would be said and done one specific character would be told to grab his things because he's expelled Suddenly, Mineta would go on to say, what? No, you can't expel me. You can't expel me. I passed the test. I, pa I passed the test. Please, please give me one more chance. But Aizawa just looks at him using his erasure quirk and says, come on. Suddenly grabbing Mineta and going to the office where he would expel him, going on to explain that not only is this kid a pervert and he knows that from just the hour that he's met this kid, but this kid has practically no potential as a hero. His quirk is not suited to the battlefield, and to be a rescue hero, he'd be a mediocre one at that. He would pretty much go on to crush Mineta's dreams right then and there, which, you know, honestly... I can't blame the guy, Mineta's quirk is pretty weak sauce, but yeah, after that would happen, Izuku and everybody else in the class would be left there, as all of the girls in UA High would be surrounding Izuku, and Kaminari and some of the other boys would just be like, lucky, Todoroki would even be looking, being like, wow, I didn't expect I'd be in the class with someone like him, he's pretty talented, I guess. And suddenly, they would all begin asking how in the world he's getting so much attention. I mean, his scores were mediocre. He didn't get a good score on not a single thing. Izuki hearing this would go on to say that, oh, that's because his quirk isn't about physicality. His quirk can do this. Shooting, you know, pointing, uh, aiming his hands in the form of a gun, he would shoot a, a love pistol towards the direction of Kaminari, who is having admiration for Izuku due to the fact that he's pulling all these girls, and that's all that Kaminari wishes he could have in his life. So, Kaminari quickly turning into stone would do so in front of everybody, and then Izuku would say, That's my quirk. As from here, everybody would be stunned. They're like, you can turn people into stone? And Izuku goes, yeah, that's my quirk. Pretty cool, right? As everybody would start getting like super hyped up for Izuku. As Izuku says that, you know, it doesn't work on everybody. But if it doesn't, then I have, th then I have these. As he takes out two little like... Uh, two little like fake gun pistols out of his hands and he's like obviously I don't have some on me but I'm trusting that through the hero program they'll probably give me some guns and I'll be able to use them similarly to snipe in case I encounter someone that I can't turn to stone whether it be a robot or a monster or who knows as everybody would just start crowding around Izuku and they would just all start asking him questions. Jiro would actually be recognized by Izuku as he would say, hey, aren't you the girl that helped me? Thanks so much. All the girls in UA would be like, wait, you guys know each other? And Araka would be wondering, she's like, how does she know him? As Izuku says, you know, I'm going to be there again this Sunday. As all the girls in UA hearing this would be like, wait, he's going to be where on Sunday? And he's like, yeah, the guitar shop. As you know, all the girls instantly know what they're doing this Sunday. As suddenly, Izuku would pretty much go on to just have a nice day at school. And after everything would be said and done and he'd be waiting for his mom outside the UA gates for her to pick him up. Um, she would actually shoot him a text saying, hey, Izuku, sorry got a little caught up with dinner do you think you can make your way here by yourself izuku after reading that would just think to himself i don't see why not mom as he would begin walking home but behind him would be a legion of girls that are just following him being like hey we can walk home with you and so izuku being the nice guy that he is would actually walk each and every single one of them individually home as the parents of the girls would see this and be like who's that they're, they're literally wanting him 
to be their future son-in-law that's how good this dude looks like they don't even care bro like if it was up to them they'd invite him over for a sleepover and whatever happens happens like that's the stuff that these parents are straight thinking bro like it is bad everyone is glazing izuku eventually izuku makes his way home about two hours after absolutely exhausted because not only did he want to go home and just watch his other video you know like and subscribe and you know do all that other stuff but you know he had stuff to do right he had to go watch his manga he had to go read his uh uh watch his watch his anime and read his manga you know he had stuff to do train eat he was starving and when he got home his food was well it was kind of cold but luckily for him about 30 minutes after izuku would close his door and start trying to pretty much eat his really cold dinner that he had a microwave all of the girls that he walked home go to him with fresh made meals that they made themselves as a thank you to izuku mind you these are not just first years these are second years these are general studies these are third years bro like, like i'd be willing to um, um, wager that freaking like nejure is there in the crowd bro like i'm telling y'all that's how much riz this man izuku has and so he just smiles like tears slowly coming out of his eyes as his mom would just be like oh come on izuku just accept it izuku goes on to accept like 30 plates of food and he would go on uh, take a bite out of each and every single one of them eating as much as he can and pretty much going on to, uh, to thank them so so much for what they did for him all the girls would ask who was your favorite and izuku would say hard to tell i liked each one in my their own individual way but um, I'm really a fan of pizza, so I'd probably have to say this one. As the girl that had made the pizza would be like, uh, I'll make you one every day if you want. And Izuku would say, please don't trouble yourself like that. This means the world to me. As from here, Izuku realizes that he can't exactly walk these girls home every day because not only is he going to be exhausted, but... He's gonna feel really bad at having to throw away this much food so izuku pretty much ends up making his mom and dad promise that they're gonna be there to pick him up from school at least the majority of the days and or he's gonna walk home with guys so what izuku would end up pretty much doing is making his way to school the very next day where he would end up meeting the number one hero all might i am here coming in through the door like a normal person all might would say as he makes his way towards the classroom and goes on to pretty much be like everybody's just loving him everyone means the girls because all, i mean the boys because all the girls are looking at izuku like they didn't even notice this dude walked in as i was seeing this would sigh and say all might's gonna be your teacher for today you're gonna have to listen to everything that he says he's gonna be your hero course training teacher for right now as from here all might goes on to explain to everybody that clothes make the pros and noticing izuku in the back would say hey young man i knew you would make your way into this classroom izuku seeing all might would say hey all might it's a pleasure i really can't wait to learn as much as i can from you all might would go on to look at izuku and say i can't either son as from here you know they all get into the hero outfits and izuku's outfit is like the sexy bro this dude's hero outfit is straight up like a tuxedo like this dude looks good bro and the reason for that is because his quirk is based on how good he looks looks so this dude's quirk is made out of like a fabric that is practically undestructible it's breathable this dude could use it for combat and he can even survive a, a, of like flames from him and the reason that he did that is because of the fact that bakugo is someone that he doesn't know if he'll ever have to face again so it's fire resistant as well not to mention he actually has two pistols that don't shoot deadly bullets but bullets hard enough to like very much like leave you bruised like like those like fat bruises you know like like a little bruise that will sting and not stop bothering you for at least a week right like it's gonna be there um like if i had to think about what izuku sort of looks like just kind of think john wick i guess like really like the dude is in a suit he looks absolutely immaculate and so eventually after all of this would be said and done all the girls would be looking at izuku they're all literally loving him like just look at the thumbnail for reference this dude took his suit jacket off and is holding it on his shoulder and uraka and momo are both just like like loving this guy and so eventually they would all be told that they're pretty much going to be paired up uraka would end up being the lucky girl that gets paired up with izuku and so izuku and uraka get the chance to talk about things uraka's blushing she doesn't know what to say she's just looking at izuku and she's like um what do you what do you think we should do you know and izuku just looks at her and says well we gotta win smiling at hers you know 
he pretty much just says that Bakugo is probably going to come after him first. So the best bet would be for her to get ahead and Izuku to stay behind just to make sure that this fight doesn't cause too much damage. As from here, Araraka would think to herself that, yeah, that's that's pretty smart. And so Izuku making his way towards the direction of um of the uh, of the what's the word I'm looking for? Making his way towards the direction of the the uh, um the tower the the building izuku making his way towards the direction of the building would make his way up a couple of floors getting to the second floor the bomb rooms on the fourth floor and he would eventually end up hearing the screams of bakugo izuku going over to grab a pen he would click it as it would turn into a gigantic bow staff izuku would start spinning it and he would hold it over his back as suddenly bakugo comes flying in faking to come in with a big right hit as izuku expected as much and spun his staff so that the effects of the explosion and like the dust would not be you know hindering izuku's fighting he would sway under bakugo as he would come flying in with an explosion and bakugo would like be like uh, at least like five feet away from him being like so deku you think you're so cool don't you i'm gonna enjoy putting you down a couple of notches holding both of his hands together he would say a p shot as he would shoot AP shots at the direction of Izuku, because mind you, he's been training very, very hard since, you know, his last defeat. And so Izuku, jumping out of the way of these attacks, would end up grabbing one of his guns as he would shoot it towards the direction of Bakugo, and a couple of the bullets would actually nick Bakugo, causing him to get very, very annoyed. Eventually, Bakugo comes in with an explosion, landing it right at the chest of Izuku, sending him crashing through the building wall. As Izuku, from here, grabbing his staff, would begin spinning it as he wax one of bakugo's a uh, gauntlet smashing it and bakugo says you know you're pretty smart for doing that and izuku says that uh, is asked why that is and bakugo unpins the other one saying because this one's gonna kill you as all might would say wait bakugo that's too dangerous but before he can even say that sentence deku would get into like a bit of like a fetal position like on the ground as the explosion would send Izuku rolling through the ground but there would be no physical damage on him. Bakugo seeing this would be like what the your costume's fireproof isn't it and Izuku says explosion proof too as suddenly Izuku would go on to pretty much click a button on his like belt thingy as he would take out two uh, brass knuckles that are cuffed that actually can like tase his opponents as well and he would rush in towards the direction of Bakugo as like in a boxer stand like swaying back and forth with Bakugo throwing an explosion at him as suddenly Bakugo would throw a big explosion at him saying get away damn it but taking advantage of that Deku would sway in and hit him with a jab to the side of the ring Ribs, causing Bakugo to spit out some blood as Deku immediately follows that up with an uppercut to his jaw followed by slamming him down onto the ground and grabbing him by the wrist as he proceeds to smash the other gauntlet that he has on his hand with nothing but his physical strength as from here Izuku's eyes would practically be glowing white as Bakugo tries spinning and like shooting an explosion at Izuku but Izuku's just done with him he grabs him by the other wrist and smashes a knee into Bakugo's jaw sending him crashing to the other side of the of the wall knocked out or slightly knocked out because Bakugo will wake up as Izuku makes his way towards the bomb room and finally arriving there he sees that Ida's there with Uraraka you know and he's pretending to be a villain Izuku would go on to look towards the direction of Ida and just hold a pistol out turning Ida into stone because you know Ida he's not like lusting or like loving him but he is like he does feel some feelings of like admiration towards izuku because of his quirk because of his looks because of the way that he carries himself like ida thinks that he is a, a an exceptional per human being so it works on ida ida gets turned into stone and as this happens, Izuku would make his way toward walking towards the bomb. But as this is going down, Izuku would actually notice that he can hear explosions coming soon. So Izuku quickly tells Araraka to grab onto the bomb as Izuku undoes the effect of the petrification on Ida. But Bakugo would have came in and literally blasted an explosion, almost killing Ida, mind you. Because if Ida was shattered as he was turned into stone, that would have been it. That, that's straight up GG's. So Bakugo straight up almost killed Ida. And the second that that happens, Bakugo would just be sitting there super battle damaged, mind you. As Deku says, what the hell? You could have killed him. He says he was turned into stone. You know this, Bakugo. And Bakugo would say, I don't care. I'm going to beat you. As Deku looking at him would be like, 
You know, I thought I could give you another chance. I don't know why you have to hate me so much. What did I ever do to you? And Bakugo says, what didn't you do? Rushing back in to throw an explosion at Izuku, as Deku punches him in the stomach as hard as he possibly can, knocking Bakugo out with his fist on there, as Deku's fist would have straight up electrocuted Bakugo's stomach as well, and the brass knuckles would have let a, left a fat indent, breaking a rib, as Bakugo would just be laying there on the ground, and Deku would say, next time think before you almost kill someone, you idiot. You know what I realize the longer I make these videos? That... I am really, really lazy when it comes to these videos. I mean, it doesn't take me that long to make a part, but for some reason, I constantly procrastinate. Like I know to you guys, I just finished telling Bakugo that he's dumb, but in my point of view, it's literally been days. So, you, you know, so, sorry about that. I haven't posted because of, because of that. So, um, yeah, but moving on right after the events of the heroes versus villains stuff, I think what we should probably get into is that specific thing that he's going to have to go do at the Guitar Center, right? He's going to go to the store just as he had promised, and this time, not only is Deku leaving with another guitar, but he is also leaving having made a friend. And this specific friend is actually going to be none other than a super, super famous, like, singer in Japan. Like, I know we usually don't see the stuff that actually happens in the, in the My Hero Academia universe, but, like, this dude is going to be a straight-up super popular, famous singer, dancer, songwriter. You know, you get the gist, right? Like, think Justin Bieber pulled up and straight-up just became this dude's friend. Or, like, what, 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 is it is it Chinese or Korean? Korean pop? Yeah, Deku's definitely not Korean, so I can't say that he's going to be making some K-pop boy band or something like that. But he does meet some really, really famous singer. And this dude proceeds to basically befriend Izuku with all of these girls watching, bro. And all of them are just going crazy. Now, not only are they like drooling for Deku, but they're over here like, can I get an autograph? Can I get an autograph? Bro, you can even hear one girl who shook the hand of Deku literally go, I'm never washing this hand again. And Izuku would just be sitting there as he straight up gets invited to watch him record a song really, really soon. Izuku gets invited to a uh, to a recording session, right? As he's just like, I mean, I'm I'm down. Like I, I've always wanted to see what that world is like. And so, Izuku literally the next day after school gets to go to this dude's music studio place. And when Deku arrives there, he's greeted to like a bunch of security guards who, seeing him, are just like, wow. You know, like, that's all they can say. Like, they're usually these big, buff, serious dudes. And Izuku's standing tall. Like, he's right next to them. Like, just, he has a confident look on his face. One of them goes, who are you? Until finally, the character who, you know, obviously is, like, the famous dude, comes up to Izuku and is all like, oh, that's my friend. So they let him in, and Izuku's just sitting there jamming out. This dude literally gets put onto a bunch of different techniques when it comes to the guitar. And not only that, but Izuku proceeds to realize that not only does he kind of like guitar, but he likes the drums way better. And not only does he like the drums, but he's actually the one playing in the drums in the background. This dude, Izuku, was put into the music video with the actual singer that was doing it with him and bro not only that but izuku was literally singing in the music video like he convinced izuku to sit there and sing with him so this song managed to not only explode which it would have done regardless it probably would have hit number one billboard but this thing proceeded to get triple platinum and izuku was invited a month from now to go on on one tour concert with him and sing the song live in front of millions of fans who are gonna go watch him mind you all of these fans are pretty much girls and the only uh, and like most of them are gonna be newly single girls because their boyfriends didn't want them to go but the point is izuku izuku's gonna be performing okay like that, that's all i'm gonna say point being after all of this craziness happens from the second time of him going to the guitar store izuku thinks that you know he probably should lay low for a while since he doesn't exactly want to go too famous i mean he's a hero student he doesn't want to be some pop star or something like that so he kindly tells his buddy that, you know, he's down to do that. And maybe some other day he'll be down again. But for now, he wants to focus on his hero stuff. So he completely understands and tells him that if that hero stuff ever doesn't work or he just wants something on the side, he can always call his um his uh his uh, his manager and his manager will get him in his own studio, his own brand and all this stuff. And he can become super rich and famous like he is. 
uh, he would also thank him and give Izuku a royalty check for helping him make that song literally like 10 times bigger. He gives him like straight up a $1 million check, which Izuku is just super happy about. He cashes it in. At first, he's like, dude, I can't accept this. Like, I didn't do anything. You're the one that encouraged me. But after a bit of, you know, begging from the guy, he's like, dude, please take it. Like, it literally would not have made me half as much money if not for you. This is the least I could do. In fact, this is not enough, but I know how humble you are. So Izuku goes on to accept it, bowing so many times as he eventually leaves the door. And eventually he would find himself inside of UA classroom where he would be informed about the UA, uh, the US, no, 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 the USJ event, right? After the class would be informed of the USJ event by Zawa, I could see him basically passing out a bunch of permission slips and everybody in the class starting to pretty much ask Izuku, you know, what his thoughts are on what, what they're about to do. And Izuku's just like, oh, you know, I think it's going to be cool. All the girls are fawning for him, obviously, like usual. Kaminari is just sitting there like, ah, so lucky. Kirishima is just like, Bakugo, you jealous? And Bakugo's like, shut up, I'm not jealous. As from here, Izuku would just look towards the front of the classroom grab the back of his head and say i'm sorry aizawa as you know aizawa is kind of going to understand that it's kind of unavoidable aizawa is also one of the people that's immune to izuku's quirk plus not only that but he could straight up cancel the quirk itself so you know there's that anyways though continuing forward with the story eventually we would find ourselves in the ua bus and izuku would be sitting towards the back of it right all the girls are trying to like cram next to him like you know how when you're on the bus there's like the back row, like the back back row, and then like the next back row. So Izuku's in the back row, right next to a right uh on the passenger side, actually. Yeah, like no no no, where you like you can walk out like to the uh to like the actual like place where you like stand up to walk. So Izuku's sitting there. This dude has literally like Mina next to him because she won at rock, paper, scissors. Or Rakas to the other side, Momo's right next to him, Suyu's there, invisible girls there, and they're all like like the girls that are in front of the seat are literally looking the other way to talk with izuku and aizawa has to tell them over and over sit down it's unsafe you know what i mean but eventually they end up arriving to the usj and once they do we would get the iconic kurigiri scene where he's like ah sorry to crash in heroes yada 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 like i don't know if you guys can tell but i don't care about anything but these hilarious moments which is kind of ironic because it's like dude this is the my hero story not the the disastrous life of izuku story or lookism deku or something like that but that that's that's basically what this is right but the point is they end up arriving and izuku gets teleported away to the water section once izuku arrives there izuku can see a bunch of fishes down in the water and because they actually can't see him all too well because obviously you know they're kind of underwater izuku is slightly glowing so they think that there that's like some sort of quirk but no nah, this dude just literally has a glow like uh like not like not even like like animation because you guys know how like when people draw anime characters they'll give them a glow to like uh to like kind of show that they're like super cool or like they're like super special bro this dude literally has a glow coming off of him like a light right just like Teruhashi. look that up in case you don't know what i'm talking about but the point is izuku literally like would get charged by these guys but before anything could happen suyu literally blitzes in faster than she's ever moved before saving izuku as they land on top and izuku would literally proceed to brush his hand through his hair as he wipes it back and starts to basically take the water off of his face his clothes are starting to like literally press into his skin just due to the fact that it's wet so izuku's standing there looking on top of all these villains bro these villains proceed to literally be like, wow. Like, they're all just looking at him. They're like, how is he that good looking? So Izuku, after seeing that, would proceed to basically create an imaginary bow. But like, a gigantic heart appears in front of him that Tsuyu sees as he pulls back like it was a bow and shoots a bunch of hearts at all of the villains that are in the water. All of them immediately proceed to get, like turned into stone inside of the water which means like they'll be fine like they're not gonna drown but right after that happens izuku pretty much goes on to tell suyu that they can now swim there or they can make that jump so suyu saying that she can do that for them would jump over and after izuku sees and you know after he makes it to land that is he would realize that aizawa was in the midst of facing off against a bunch of villains and izuku being the kind person that he is is like dude i'm not about to let my sensei face all of these villains for us meanwhile i go over there and do nothing so izuku charges into the battle and usually suyu would be like oh ribbit we shouldn't go over there with yuku but this time she's just like i'll help you so she jumps in mind you she's never had combat experience and proceeds to help izuku out with facing these villains 
At seeing this, Aizawa would tell them both to be careful, and Izuku would look back at him and say, right back at ya, as he proceeds to use his love beam on a bunch of the villains that are there, until eventually Shigaraki realizing all that's going on would start scratching at his neck, being like, it's not fair, it's not fair, Kuragiri, get the Nomu. As suddenly, the Nomu would be transported in. And also, can I just add, my throat really just hurt from making that Shigaraki voice. It always happens. I don't know why I always choose to do it. But point being, uh, the Nomu gets brought in. And when this happens, this is going to be really, really bad for Izuku. Because mind you, I mean, his quirk works on things that are attracted to him. Find love, find lust, or, you know, like think he's cool or something like that. Or admire him, right? But unfortunately for him, this Nomu literally has no feelings. It probably would be funny if like the Nomu like fell in love with him or something like that but it's it's just not it's not realistic right that'd be more of like a gag scene rather than a realistic quirk scene right so because of that izuku's quirk is gonna have borderline no effect on this nomu so izuku from here would proceed to get punched in the stomach as izuku gets sent crashing onto the ground and shigaraki would let out a cackle it'd be in this moment that aizawa realizing that he had literally been using his erasure quirk on this thing and seeing the damage that izuku just took would finally put two and two together finding out that that thing doesn't have a quirk for its strength that thing is just crazy strong and he would think to himself it's dang near as strong as all might as as this would be happening izuku would be getting back up his vision literally blurry from that punch never having been hit that hard before like the closest thing would be like half like no like one third of that strength but that was just monumentally insane izuku from here would wobble back up as suyu goes over to him helping him up and as izuku's like starting to stand up you would basically just see aizawa getting his head smashed into the ground by the nomu who's doing his absolute best to crush aizawa was will to fight and i mean like i'm not gonna lie dude it would be working and it'd be working very very good to say the least right and so what happens at this is that izuku turning his his eyes towards the nomu would decide that he's taking that thing out no matter what so he rushes back in as the nomu still grabbing onto aizawa's head and like just smashing it into the ground not only that but grabbing his arm and literally breaking it like the backwards you know what i mean would proceed to then lunge at it as izuku tells suyu to do it now she would proceed to wrap the nomu with her tongue and she says i don't know how long i can hold him izuku as from here izuku jumps up into the air with both of his uh with both of his uh shocking um uh brass or, or, or gauntlets or uh the the knuckle dusters that he have that can also shoot out electricity he would smash both of them into the head of the nomu and fully charge all of the electricity that's within them mind you the way that they work is that they have a specific electric output charge and the maximum is 10,000 or 10 million volts so izuku uses the entire 10 million volts on the head of the nomu which causes the nomu to let out a huge shriek as the nomu's eyes would pretty much start bulging out of its head and it would proceed to start taking some real damage but unfortunately the electric charge would finally end they needed at least another 10 million more for it to fully take the nomu out so the nomu would eventually end up recovering grabbing onto deku's leg and before he can smash him onto the ground practically breaking his leg and bones izuku would be saved by all might who would arrive just in the nick of time mind you this is an overpowered izuku this is um more of like a gag izuku so he's not going to be as op as the other ones that i've made before right and also you know realistically most of my other izukus probably shouldn't be able to beat the nomu but you know how i am i love op characters point being izuku gets saved by all might and the day is rescued but izuku watching all that went down would realize to himself that he is not physically strong enough to take out some foes and the reality of a bunch of villains probably having a quirk that is or not a quirk but probably just being able to straight up resist the effects of his quirk is going to be very real i mean maybe if he was a girl it'd be a lot easier but he's not and he has to face that reality he's attractive and that attractiveness is going to work great to an extent but one day he's gonna have to face the fact that he might straight up die out there in combat if he doesn't have some really good you know sidekicks with him which you know i'm kind of alluding to something about to happen right izuku needs sidekicks you know female characters love him yeah this dude's gonna have a uh, not an actual harem which is what the word i was actually gonna use but like 
not a harem because you know like he's not gonna like them back or do anything with them but just like they're gonna work with him just due to the fact that he is attractive right and that's the reason they're willing to risk their lives for him so and the first example that we got to see of this was suyu putting her life on the line and risking herself even though this is completely out of character due to the fact that there's just so much lust and love towards the direction of deku and let me tell y'all lust can make you do a lot of things trust me that's a battle that i have lost way too many times anyways point being um after this would happen, cleanup would take place and Izuku over the course of this next week would pretty much begin thinking to himself that there has to be a way for him to be able to take out some more powerful villains in case his uh, his tools aren't, you know, up to protocol. So what Izuku would do is pretty much see if there's any way that he can get in touch with David Shield, someone who he knows very well is one of the smartest people in the world. So Izuku through his connection to the famous singer that he had just met would pretty much try to see if there's any any way that he can gain access to David Shield. And for the following week, Izuku would pretty much end up getting in contact with him within like literally an hour after like thinking about it, right? So for the following week, Izuku would be in contact with David Shield, pretty much telling him that he needs a serious upgrade to his costume. He needs to be able to look attractive in order to take out villains, but he also needs his suit and outfit to be sustainable when it comes to facing off against villains, the likes of the strength of All Might, something that can grant him durability, fireproof, maybe something that can let him breathe underwater, a gas mask, just anything. Izuku needs a different costume that's going to allow him to use everything that he has at his disposal perfectly. And so what David Shield would pretty much develop is a super bionic uh, like tuxedo suit that this suit is basically going to be granting Izuku the ability to jump way higher than a normal human. The, the, the shoes are going to be able to grapple and run on buildings themselves. Like he's not going to be able to run super fast, but like his normal speed is incredible. But, you know, there obviously is the fact that he has to practice running up walls. So it's like it's going to be a little difficult at first. Um, he's also going to be having a grappling hook that's going to allow him to get to places in case he can't like climb them and stuff like that. His gauntlets are going to have their charge go up to a million, a uh, hundred million volts. And instead of having to recharge them the way that he did with the other ones, Ones, all he needs is sunlight for them izuku's suit is also going to be granting him super strength and the durability of this thing is going to be off the chart the fit for izuku's body is going to be absolute perfection because it molds to his body to uh to basically highlight all of his like all of his good attributes and like make his bad attributes or like you know the things that aren't as good because he has no bad attributes even better so now izuku has this like really really cool bionic suit that's going to be helping him out a lot and izuku's realized one more thing yeah he can have all this tech in the world and you know his fighting skills are up to par but he's going to be needing some serious hand-to-hand -hand training if he's ever gonna uh, you know like stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with characters that are really 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 powerful so izuku decides to look into manga and stuff like that just to see if there's anything that he can pick up maybe there's a specific character with a realistic ish type of fighting style that can help him out this would be when izuku would look into an anime called lookism at this point, Izuku would realize that there's only one season to it, so being pretty sad about that, he would go on looking into the manga, which is something that I, you know, I, I, I did. I'm sorry to say it, but I did, right? And so Izuku proceeds to learn about a man by the name of Gun. Gun something something Park, I think is his name, is it? I'm not sure. But the point is, this character is so badass and he has like the coolest fighting style. It's so ruthless, masculine, and like if Izuku's being honest, it's straight up like attractive. Like that's how cool this dude's fighting style is, bro. Like you 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 would practically want to have kids with this guy if you saw this dude beating someone up bro like that that's how it is so izuku begins to implement some of this guy's fighting techniques into his own fighting style itself and izuku would be very very good at fighting right after this one week would be over it's not like this dude perfected it or something like that but he added a couple extra things that he was able to do within the limits of his body right now and he's going to continue working on his fighting style to suit his needs for later on occasions right 
And that's all that Izuku's gotten. So to this point, Izuku has gotten a lot of upgrades to himself. At this point, we're now going to be jumping into the UA Sports Festival because obviously that's the arc that comes before. Now, in the original, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a specific part in the story where all of the characters in UA all went to look at Class 1A, and that happens, but that's not something that's like rare or distinct to the specific day because they were attacked by the ua uh at the us uh at the usj this is something that happens every day just due to izuku's presence like all of the other guys in other classes low-key want to go get a glimpse of izuku the girls want to go do so as well but there was one character that never really cared about that and that would be shinso who at this point, after having all of this go down and everything that's been happening, he would pretty much want to scope out the competition and he's immune to Izuku's charm. Because I just don't see Shinso falling for something like that. And so, pretty much, Izuku gets a glimpse of him realizing that, okay, his quirk probably won't work on that guy. And that's something that Izuku has been enjoying doing and using his analytical mind has been starting to realize, okay, some people, it doesn't work on them. And they fit a specific uh, profile that Izuku starting to grow more accustomed to noticing. So Izuku, using this knowledge that he's starting to gain, would start to profile more and more uh, type and types and characters who won't be weak to his quirk, and is making Izuku even more efficient as a pro hero. Eventually, they would end up all arriving at the UA Sports Festival, and there Izuku would be the one who's responsible for giving the speech, just because he's the one that ended up getting the most points in the in the entrance exam. So. Suzuku, after giving a legendary speech, the like of which has never seen such a crazy uproar from the crowd, would be done. Izuku would pretty much go back to his classmates where he wishes everybody luck and everybody's like we wish you luck Izuku Midoriya as Izuku just like holds one hand out and starts like blowing kisses at the crowd from here everybody's just like so excited bro girls are literally fighting to stand in the spot where Izuku's kiss blew like that's how deep it is bro but eventually we would get the first event which would be the race and the first thing that Izuku does as soon as the race would start is pretty much use his quirk to turn everybody there who feels attraction towards him into stone. This includes Todoroki, mind you, because Todoroki doesn't feel like attraction or lust towards him, but he does view and ad there's an admiration of sorts that Todoroki has towards Izuku, right? Just because like, I mean, the dude is cool, right? He has pretty much everything in the way that Todoroki views it. So the only character that the only two characters that would that would not be like stuck there would pretty much be Shinso and Bakugo. Now, Bakugo being who he is would take advantage of this fully and would make his way towards first place. Izuku would begin rushing towards the robots, but upon realizing that he has to face off against a zero pointer, he would unfreeze every, he would unpetrify everyone who's there, realizing that that strategy just wasn't going to be working for now. And so some people would get kind of upset at the fact that he pretty much froze them, but it doesn't matter because Todoroki proceeded to do the same thing with his ice, destroying one of those zero, or no, actually not destroying it, but just using his ice to go right past it. Or no, I would say that he would definitely freeze one. Then Kirishima and Tetsu 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 would end up arriving, they get crushed by a robot, and so Izuku would finally have a clear path to go. This version of Izuku is not going to be getting the craziest marks. He'd get like, what, fifth or sixth place? It's like something more realistic, just because I don't see him using that trick with the, with the landmines and stuff this time around. Plus, with the way that the race is playing out i just i just really don't see it and then right after that happens we would pretty much get the cavalry battle which is where every single one of the girls there would rush towards izuku's side being like please let me be on your team let me be on your team to the point where a fight literally breaks out between the girls at ua and the general core students and all of that like they're literally fighting like like cats like angry cats over who gets to fight some hair would be pulled and eventually they have to stop the broadcast because izuku is literally causing problems unintentionally so after all this would be said and done izuku would end up having uraraka be on his team because of her useful quirk momo yayorozu because you know she has a really really cool quirk and izuku would also have who's another very useful character that could help out a lot 
We could say that he also has Kendo on his team. Now, why do I say Kendo? Because her really big hands, I can see it happen where Uraraka is going to be able to pretty much form uh, to make them all weightless. So because of this, she's able to hold them all up above her head with both of her arms facing upwards. And because of Uraraka's quirk, she's able to, you know, do very well. Momo, I could see you creating like a, a turret, like a turret that doesn't shoot real bullets, obviously. But this turret would pretty much deter most people from going for Izuku most but unfortunately not bakugo because bakugo would be after them that entire time and until eventually they would end up having to shoot a barrage of these like these turret bullets at the direction of bakugo plus izuku would turn bakugo's teammates into stone pretty much telling him to stay away from him for the remainder of this test or else his him and his team are gonna lose so bakugo knowing that he literally can't beat him because unfortunately this time around he's weighed down by these extras so he proceeds to stay away from izuku and todoroki taking note of the fact that he can be turned to stone would proceed to be like all right i don't want to face off against this guy so what ends up happening is izuku makes his way past that part of the test flawlessly and right after this takes place izuku would pretty much make his way towards the preliminary or not the preliminary battles but the 1v1 battles it would be here that izuku would be faced off with none other than shinso hitoshi or something like that right Shinso Hitoshi? Or should we say he's faced off against with someone else? Nah, let's just do Shinso. The second that this battle would start, I can easily see Shinso saying something along the lines of, it must be nice to have such a perfect quirk, such a perfect little life. You have girls, quirk, you probably were raised by the best parents ever. It must be nice to be gifted. And after Izuku hears that, Izuku would think to himself, he's like, I mean, he is right. It was nice. I did have the best parents. I was born with an extremely good quirk, and I have had it really easy most of my life. He would then look towards the direction of Shinso, not saying anything at what he just said, before Shinso goes, Didn't you hear me? It must be nice to have all of these gifts in your life. You've never had to work for anything, have you? You stuck up pretty boy. After these words leave Shinso's mouth, Izuku hearing that would be like, Dang, like, he never ever once in his life has started to has start have stopped sorry to think about the fact that this dude is low-key right like from the moment izuku was born he's had an easy life even though he was born to a family that wasn't rich they became rich because of him even though izuku you know could have had parents that probably caused him to be super cocky and super arrogant he wasn't he was born to the perfect mother inko and a great father in hisashi izuku has had it too easy and for the first time in his life or not the first time in his life like literally but like for once in his life izuku wants to give an opportunity to have things easy to someone else so as izuku had finished you know pretty much spouting that out izuku would pretty much turn towards shinso realizing that he's gonna have an internship possibilities regardless of whether he wins the sports festival or not plus if he ends up having a face off against todoroki or bakugo without his suit he's probably gonna be in for a big run for his money so izuku decides that he doesn't really want to deal with that and he wants to help shinso out plus the crowd is basically hating on shinso right now they're literally throwing cups popcorn and stuff down like at shinso but izuku just looks at shinso smiles and walks off the ring with midnight being like izuku midori has walked off the ring we're not sure why but izuku proceeds to basically look up at the crowd and say for those of you wondering the only reason that i quit is because i think it's better to give others opportunity to showcase their quirks ever since i can remember i've been in the limelight but i think it's time to let others shine do your best, Shinso. Prove to everybody that I was right in stepping down for you. Shinso hearing this would have a, like, just be like, what? Like, and from here, he has admiration for Izuku. So now, Izuku's quirk will work on Shinso. But Iz Izuku doesn't even know what he just did. So, Izuku steps off, basically losing the sports festival, as Bakugo would just be, like, basically foaming at the mouth because bakugo wanted to take the opportunity to humiliate izuku in front of hundreds and thousands of people but now since izuku quit he's not going to get that opportunity so as izuku would make his way towards the back arena where everybody else and all the other students are at bakugo would bump into him before he can finish anything else and he would pretty much tell him so deku you quit so you wouldn't have to fight me that's the truth isn't it and izuku says look bakugo if you think that i quit because i don't want to fight you think what you want 
At the end of the day, you would have been at an advantage. It was an open area, you would have had the chance to fly up in the air and shoot your little AP shots. And sure, I probably would have lost, but don't get too high and mighty. Because remember, here, we're in an enclosed space. And I can grab your head and smash it into my knee in two seconds unless you get out of my way. As from here, Bakugo at hearing this would be like, Huh? You've never been this cocky, you damn extra. As Izuku would say, as I see it, you're the extra. Just remember every single moment in your life, you've been my background character. Not the other way around, Bakugo. Now step out of my way. As he walks past him, and Bakugo grits his teeth thinking to himself that he'll kill him one day. As from here, Todoroki would have been listening into that conversation, and Todoroki would be thinking to himself that that was a completely different Deku than the one that he's been, you know, thinking that Izuku was. But as Izuku would bump into Todoroki, Izuku would have a conversation telling him that he's probably the only one that could wipe that smug look off of his face other than him. Basically telling Todoroki to crush him with his ice. As Todoroki would say, I'll make sure I do that for you, Izuku. Asking him a question. Did you really quit for that reason? As Izuku would say, yeah, I mean, I was born with such an incredible quirk. He proceeds to explain it, saying that it was an incredible gift. Todoroki is a huh. Must have been nice to have been born with a great quirk. As in this moment, in this hallway talk, Izuku proceeds to break down all the walls that Todoroki had built for himself through all these years of basically telling himself that it's his quirk in a different fashion, but it still happens. So Todoroki is able to go out and face Bakugo with his flame and ice, meaning that Bakugo, unfortunately, this time around is going to be standing no chance. Todoroki would be the winner of the USJ. After all this would happen, the hero students would now be told that they're going to be having to pick their internships and their pro hero names. But as for the pro hero names, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to be the ones to pick it. This is obviously going to be a compilation of all these parts that I'm recording. So the best comment down below for the hero name is going to be getting pinned and... Um, you know, actually that's it. So the best comment is going to be getting pinned and, and I'll comment to it, you know, telling you that it was a good comment or whatever, but yeah, comment down below what your best ideas are for this version of Izuku, what his hero name should be. I would also say comment down below who he would intern with, but that's something for future me to think about because I've recorded 30 minutes and I got to go play basketball. So I'll catch you guys in a couple of seconds. Peace. After a long day of work, I can finally say that I'm back. All right, jumping back into the story, I remember the last thing that I was talking about was the hero internship process. Now, what I'm thinking could possibly happen in this uh, like part of the story is one of two things. Number one, we could go down the route of Izuku actually going through some like very intensive training with the likes of Aizawa, somebody who uses a lot of like hand-to-hand -hand combat for villains, especially when he doesn't have to face off against a villain that his quirk canceling ability won't be able to pretty much nullify, right? So Aizawa would probably be the best person to teach somebody like Izuku how to use his quirk even better. Now, this would also lead to him also working alongside of Shinso because I do believe that Shinso ended up up working with Aizawa during this break but because of the nature of the story that we've been going with I decided that ultimately I would finally take a bit of a serious approach and have Izuku actually go and work and train under his teacher Aizawa now I think that this is a great opportunity for Izuku because not only is this going to let Izuku and Aizawa have some time together and have each other learn a couple of things about them each other but this is also going to give Aizawa a chance to realize that Aizawa or sorry that Izuku is not the person that he had basically made a profile of him to be right like he's not going to be the stuck a person he thinks izuku's humble he's very talented in combat and if you train him hard enough and you teach him just the right things izuku's gonna soak it up like a sponge so that's exactly what happens over the course of one week something that took aizawa literally years to master izuku would have learned the scarf fighting technique which is something that Izuku actually thinks is going to be an incredible asset if he was to ever need something like that. It would help him with maneuvering places, something that his suit already has, but let's say he doesn't have something like that, then that would be literally perfect. Plus, for specific missions and to deal with specific villains, maybe when he opens his own hero agency, he can have some of his support heroes have some objects like that for him on standby. Izuku already knows that his hero agency is probably going to be filled with mostly women, so Izuku Izuku's sort of already planning a future where he's going to have a lot of female characters with very potent quirks. Somebody like Uraraka for rescue is something that he's definitely thought about. Momoyaya Rosu would be perfect as a support hero for him. Somebody like 
burning or no not burning because obviously you know she's not there but somebody like maybe cammy with an illusion quirk because i can a hundred out of a hundred times see cammy being a character that is going to definitely have a huge liking for izuku but nonetheless one of the main things that izuku would focus on other than that would be close quarters combat and Iz aizawa would actually teach izuku a lot more grappling techniques something that he actually had to learn when he was younger and aizawa would actually direct izuku to a man that actually taught him him now this man isn't a pro hero because unfortunately for him he was born quirkless but aizawa having the quirk that he has and having the nature that he has he can see past the quirklessness i know in the my hero academia story aizawa probably wouldn't especially due to his character development up to this point but for this point he is definitely going to be seeing past those things. So what we're going to be having happen is Izuku's going to return back to school and he is going to be a big, big threat when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat like if you have a quirk that is relying on super strength and it requires you to land a blow on izuku and get really close izuku is going to have you on the floor in like two seconds flat i can promise you that and that is the little mini upgrade that izuku is going to get now this is where things get interesting because i didn't exactly talk about what happens during the internship for ida now remember stain is still going to be a threat and aizawa in the original version of this story was nowhere to be found near no hosu so this means that izuku is not going to be present in this timeline so instead what we're actually going to be having happen is that there is going to be a one month break now you guys might be like okay why this one month break now let me explain putting it bluntly in the original my hero academia story when the when the when the heroes had the usj incident for the first time and that was their first incident they ended up taking a one week break in order to basically clear up things with the media make sure that the students were mentally okay after the villain attack so after one of their beloved students would literally die in an, in, in an internship, they're going to need at least a month worth of media coverage for them to basically blow this over. And I can easily see the Tenya family, you know, putting in a good word for UA, saying that this was not UA's fault because of the fact that it produced a hero like his big brother in Genium. And the father, I believe, also went to UA. I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on that. But for the purposes of this specific timeline and story and the narrative that I'm building, let's say that he is going to be a UA student. So after a month of rigorous, like, of rigorous media and stuff like that making sure that the, the ua name doesn't get dragged through the mud ua would finally open back up in a month now this one month normally would be an absolute detriment for izuku but in this specific timeline where he doesn't have to deal with the backlashes of one for all or have to deal with him learning things and not being able to actually be in contact with all might this is going to be incredible for izuku because there is one thing that izuku does have access to and that would be his brand new suit which david shield would have finally ended up getting to him and now izuku having this with him is able to see the capabilities that izuku is able to get to when he is wearing this suit izuku would be massively impressed like even without the suit izuku was very very powerful very capable fighter and he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody the likes of aizawa and i would wager would win six out of ten times as i would win a couple of times just due to experience at this point but with this suit on there's no way in in this world that aizawa is going to be beating izuku so Izuku is getting very powerful very quickly and Izuku would do one thing and also work on his boxing way more and he would not only just develop normal boxing like hand-to-hand -hand combat styles but Izuku would develop a more of a rugged approach where like he'll take blows wait for a perfect opening and land a killer blow to the side of the of a person's head which could low-key kill them but Izuku like holds it back just enough so that their cranium won't like break and they won't straight up die. So just to put it bluntly, Izuku is going to be getting very powerful. Now, after he's seeing that this suit is way more powerful than he is, and it's kind of like unfair in the mind of izuku that he's going to be having access to something like this he's pretty much having a nanotech like suit basically is what this is but izuku seeing that this thing is so much stronger than him decides that he needs to get at least half as strong as this suit thing is so for the following month izuku doesn't go to home and work out and go to gyms this dude proceeds to go out in the wilderness in the snowy regions through using some contacts that he has in his phone because izuku knows people who know people who know 
more people. And using the million dollars that he would have gotten and been given, he would have put that into his body to basically get the best training facility, get the best workout equipment, get the best trainers, and pretty much take his like level of strength even higher. Izuku was muscular before, now this dude is ripped. This dude's muscles are bulging out. And without even flexing, he looks like he has a fully flexed IG physique. This dude looks like a complete model. He is a beast and izuku is more than ready to handle any of the fights that he's going to be having to take on when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat and stuff like that not only that but izuku's durability would have gone crazy because he would have actually been practicing how to tank literal explosions because he knows there might be a villain with a fire quirk he's upped his uh fire durability and his electricity durability he's done that by pretty much sitting in a chair and getting electrocuted every single day hiring the voltage every moment until it feels like he's about to pass out but that would pretty much help him get like not a zenkai boost but it would help him get like a uh, tolerance to it you know what i mean like say you've gotten hit in the head of a bunch of times like eventually you get like it doesn't hurt as bad as it does the first time does that make sense like i don't really know if there's a better way for me to put it but in layman's terms that's what i'm trying to say eventually though like i said they do return to school and upon returning to school i can see them having about one week of grace period where they're caught up on most of their uh, teaching and stuff like that and they're also going to be having back to back to back to back hero course trainings just refreshing them on all the things that they could have learned on monday now this would lead to them more than in the original wanting to have a training cramp just training camp due to the fact that they missed a month of time with the students and so after they pretty much accomplish you know what they have to in terms of like what's the word i'm looking for in terms of the finals and stuff like that just to see like uh how these kids have kept up with their studying while the time that they're gone right after that would be done and all the students would figure out who they're going to be facing off against and stuff like that we would end up basically having the um the forest training camp but before i can jump into that i do have to cover really quickly what happens and who izuku's matched up with in this specific timeline i could definitely say that izuku might be matched up against all might but that's just one of those things where it's like if izuku fights all might he's not going to be putting up much of a threat just due to the fact that like i just don't see izuku i mean like izuku pro actually no that's not true i feel like all might definitely is going to be having a level of admiration towards izuku at least a bit right so say he faces off against all might it's kind of like up in the air whether his love love beam would work but i'm going to wager this for this specific timing and because izuku's going to impress all might a lot he's going to have admiration towards izuku which would lead to the perfect opening for izuku to use his love love beam and absolutely destroy all might by you know well turning him to stone now there is obviously the other option of the of the of these things where i'm i'm thinking that another thing that we could definitely do is izuku is actually going to be paired up with momo and baku goes paired with todoroki so those two are going to be facing off against um all might and izuku is going to be facing off against aizawa just basically trying to see how izuku will perform without that quirk of his because they all have a feeling that his quirk would work on all might and a one shot win wouldn't really do too much in terms of testing so izuku would have momo create a couple of gadgets for herself and him and they would pretty much go on to like lure aizawa into a building where aizawa has no choice but to get into a close quarters combat fight with izuku luckily for izuku not only is he wearing a suit but after having trained alongside aizawa izuku understands how the scarf works so after aizawa would shoot a scarf after at the direction of izuku izuku would grab it mid-air as he yanks it and just yells out momo now and it would be at this moment that momo like pulls out this cannon that doesn't shoot bullets it doesn't shoot a big like cannonball it shoots literal sludge sludge that hardens incredibly quick and this sludge would quickly be shot at aizawa as aizawa would be covered in this goo and muck that completely immobilizes him in this moment aizawa would smile and say that he did well as from here, Izuku's team would pass and Momo would ask Izuku, you know, and Momo would basically be like, we made a great team, you know, being completely out of character, being like, we should do this again. And Izuku would look at her and be like, I'd love to. As, you know, Momo starts blushing like crazy and Izuku just walks off, making his way towards his classmates as, you know, he starts talking to them. And eventually now we can finally jump into the forest training camp, right? 
and in, in terms of the force training camp what's going to be happening here well what i believe is going to be happening is first off they're obviously going to be taken to the mountain range where they're going to have to see their eventual training camp area and they're going to realize wait why are we so far why did we stop here if the training camp is over but before they could even understand what's going on aizawa and the teachers would have already thrown them off the cliff leading them to have to face off against a ton of monsters now this would be great for izuku in terms of his uh in terms of him showcasing his brand new power and capabilities and i'll just be let's see let's give izuku like what 15 percent full cowling speed and like 20% full cowling strength and that's like his physical strength combined with the suit that's why he's that strong right so what we're pretty much going to be having happen after this is izuku is going to like run towards these robots and eventually he would kind of get to the realization that his hero outfit well, like, like it would be perfectly durable but it's just gonna get dirty so izuku proceeded to unbutton his shirt unbutton his like tuxedo jacket you know thing that he has and he would give it to one of the girls in the back invisible girl specifically saying that it would mean the world to him if she could hold it so now that's pretty much all she did and izuku goes in his back being absolutely ripped picking a monster up by the legs and suplexing it on the ground with everybody being stunned at the levels of strength that izuku's displaying even sato would be like that's manly as kirishima would say i've been saying that dude and so we would finally have the hero students arriving at the training camp now this training camp is going to be lasting a little bit longer than the original i think the original time was one week but in this specific timeline it's going to be two weeks now obviously in the original we also do have the altercation between shigaraki and izuku after the uh the stain event incident but i didn't mention that because of the fact that without you know izuku being there to stop the nomus and stuff like that that means that stain would never be captured so stain is still out there running amok and not only that but he's with the league of villains so stain is going to be showing up during the raid on the forest training camp but that is going to be falling under the second week is what i want to say because the villains want to pretty much have the heroes as tired as possible the hero students as worked up as possible so that their mission to capture katsuki bakugo could go even easier than if that wasn't the case so what would pretty much end up happening is after these like after like let's say 12 days would be over of them training extremely hard izuku would have mainly been doing a bunch of hand-to-hand -hand combat with the wild wild pussycats alongside aizawa who's actively canceling his quirk and izuku would have gone even better at hand-to-hand -hand combat at this point izuku has pretty much started slacking on his quirk combat usage and just straight up become a hands fighter like he's just using his straight up hands a lot of times like the uh like like obviously we we are aware that class 1b ends up actually arriving at the ua training camp and training alongside with class 1a so the girls in class 1b now are sitting there practically drooling over izuku and izuku just doing his absolute best to be kind to everyone not to like lead any girl on because like bro izuku's not izuku straight right so he likes girls but he's also not a jerk he's not about to play all these girls at the same time plus at the end of the day none of these girls really catch his eye that's kind of funny coming from coming from him but like they just don't none of them are like are, are like like he looks at them and he's like oh yeah that's who i want like for the rest of my life so izuku was just kind of like being chill about everything you know and so what we would pretty much have happen after this is the night of the incident where they finally attack now similarly to the original without the context of izuku finding out about koda's parents or the uh the bathhouse incident because you know there's no mineta what would pretty much end up going down in this specific section is we get izuku realizing that koda has been leaving often to a place and then he just randomly returns so izuku on this specific day noticing that he still had an eight proceeds to grab a plate of curry and bring it to koda izuku would follow behind making sure to be super stealthy not even making any noise mind you there's leaves all over the ground so that's extremely difficult but because izuku has stealth shoes that basically make no noise whatsoever it was very very doable for izuku and so what pretty much ends up happening is that izuku would follow koda and hear him start to cry and after he hears that izuku realizes like dude like i want to go over there and talk to this kid and figure out what's wrong because like as a hero 
it's literally his duty, right? But before Izuku could muster up the courage to go speak to Koda, thinking about like, what does he say? Like this kid is crying and he doesn't even understand what to say. Like he's never been in a situation like this. So Izuku, you know, because he, he's like, not good with kids, plus it doesn't help that he doesn't know, obviously. But before he can fig muster up the courage, the villain that would stand before him would be none other than muscular. Now this is going to be extremely fun to narrate just due to the fact that muscular does not rub me off as a villain who would feel love, lust, attraction, or admiration for Izuku. So this is going to be a straight out death match between Izuku and muscular on the side of a cliff. So as Izuku is seeing this happen and he sees this villain come out of the shadows, Izuku watching this would see as muscular takes off his cowl, tossing it to the ground and would pretty much say, well, 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 I got lucky tonight, didn't I? I get to kill an innocent brat. <laughs> Those are my favorite. As Koda, hearing this and seeing muscular and seeing the eye, would say, it's you. You're the one that you killed my... As muscular would say, huh? I killed your what, kid? Speak up. You better, you, you better say something because these are going to be your last words. As from here, Izuku would kind of put the pieces together, being like, this guy must re be responsible for the death of someone close to Koda. Not exactly knowing the context, but right as Muscula would be going in to basically throw a punch at Koda to not only crush him, but to also literally send him off of this cliff, Izuku would dive in front of Koda, like lunging in the wake, like saving him out of the way of the punch, and then would proceed to tell Koda to make his way back to the training camp now that he's going to handle this fight. As Koda hearing this would be like, but but what about you and izuku turning back to him would say don't worry about me cracking his knuckles before then looking back up at muscular and cracking his neck and he would then say come on i've been itching for a fight and to me it looks like you're going to be a pretty tough opponent as muscular from here would smile growing in mass because of his muscular tendons as from here muscular throws a blow at izuku as he barely dodges out of the way and it cracks the ground izuku would be using a a fighting style that is going to be very beneficial because right now he's facing off against somebody that if he lands blows they're going to be devastating for izuku because while his durability is high we need to remember that muscular is keeping up with izuku at 1 million percent quote unquote but at the end of the day muscular was keeping up very well with an izuku who was at bare minimum like able to muster up like 35 percent of his strength if we're being like generous and stuff like that but the point is muscular is a very powerful opponent and in this point of the story with izuku not having one for all it's going to be a very hard battle so he would be using a fighting style where he basically throws quick punches just to figure out like what makes muscular tick and eventually he would start to realize that muscular is going to be an extremely hard fight. So Izuku would proceed to just dodge, throw punches, jab, get out of there as fast as he can. And at one point, Izuku would go underneath the legs of muscular as sliding underneath, he would drop a concussion, like uh, a concussion flashbang thingy majigger as it would go off blinding muscular, leading Izuku to pretty much jumping on top of muscular's bag uh, on top of muscular back and smashing his hand into muscular's head as izuku would proceed to say i'm taking a page out of your book jiro and out of his hands or, or like out of like the sleeves of the actual tuxedo suit that he's wearing would come a very high frequency noise that would rattle the brain of muscular but muscular would cover himself before heavy damage could be placed with his muscle fibers this like this vibration would be just enough to like shake it a bit so muscular's muscle uh muscle fibers would be a bit weakened because of that attack that izuku would have just landed so now izuku creating some more space would then proceed to like just smile cockily as he lets his guard down ever so slightly but that would be just enough for muscular to rush in and punch izuku in the gut sending him crashing into the wall Right after this happens, Izuku would literally lay there and like he would be like concussed because at this point Izuku's like his vision is blurry because that blow was everything that muscular had in the tank. As from here, Izuku sitting there would have coughed out blood 
and like his spit and stuff like that some like throw up literally as he would look up towards the direction of muscular as muscular grabs izuku by the head and picks him up in front of him saying it's been fun kid but now i think i'm gonna go kill the brat but as that would happen izuku's eyes would straight up just go black they go pitch black now some of you guys might know what this means but not all of you will this is ultra instinct this is not the kind that you would see in dragon ball but this is a different kind of ultra instinct where your natural instincts you know hence ultra instinct basically take over in the fight leading to a perfect fighter basically being born who is ruthless and who is going to get the job done and izuku would once he reaches the state would look up at muscular with muscular saying so you got some fight left in you as he throws a blow at izuku's stomach but izuku would basically using his forearms and his knees block the blow as suddenly izuku would drop down to the ground grabbing onto muscular's leg as he proceeds to spin muscular so hard that muscular gets sent crashing into the ground and as muscular would be on the ground izuku quickly somersaults in the air dropping an elbow right at where mus uh, muscular's uh, muscle fibers would be slightly like the weakest and he would just attack that specific spot actually causing some damage to muscular who would get extremely excited at the brand new fighter but before him so from this point muscular would proceed to straight up just um start expanding his muscle fibers as much as humanly possible going in for a blow to just end everything here and now saying come on as izuku goes in for a blow as well but redirecting it izuku would literally like weave past the blow and proceed to pretty much like um because like muscular had missed and he like had to like go low for izuku izuku was able to land a perfect uppercut on muscular and this uppercut would have had enough force in it to cause like multiple of muscular's teeth to go crashing out of his mouth and muscular to lose consciousness for just a split second as from here izuku jumps up into the air and then proceeds to straight up like like slap like karate chop muscular right in the throat right right where his like muscles were like slightly weak so not like at his throat throat like the bottom of it but like below slightly below the chin this would cause muscular to start gagging because he literally couldn't breathe as izuku proceeds to smash his fingers into the eyes of muscular grabbing his nose causing muscular to start choking up as izuku literally just like mindless at this point would start beating in the skull of muscular into the ground leaving him in a literal vegetative state this dude takes it way too far but now muscular would just be lying there and koda witnessed that whole thing go down he hadn't run izuku in this moment would look back towards koda and then just fall onto the ground as Koda would rush to him and ask him if he's okay, but Izuku was completely unconscious. This would be when Koda would go in search of help, but in the endeavor of doing this, he would end up running into the hero killer, Stain. Now, Stain not being somebody who kills children would pretty much tell the kid to get lost, as he would do just that, running towards Aizawa, as Aizawa would actually come face to face with Stain, and this would now lead to an Aizawa versus Stain fight. So we finally meet hero killer stain you're the one responsible for killing the lives of one of my students and i'm gonna make sure you pay you're gonna go to jail tonight hero killer as from here stain says that's unlikely proceeding to lick his blade as in this moment he quickly tosses it at aizawa but aizawa quickly dodges out of the way throwing his scarf at the direction of the of the hero killer Stain being grabbed by it by the wrist, but rushing at Aizawa regardless as Aizawa yanks on the scarf. But Stain, using this momentum perfectly, would proceed to stab at the cheek of Aizawa as he would lick his blade moments before Aizawa could get to uh, kick the blade out of his hand. But it would do nothing because of Aizawa's erasure quirk. So Stain, realizing the fact that his quirk was activated and worked on him as well, would proceed to jump back, saying, No matter. He'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. As he would throw two kunais at the direction of, of Aizawa, and Aizawa would dodge them, saying, you play too much into this ninja role. As from here, he tosses his scarf one, once more, 
grabbing onto the leg of, of the hero killer Stain, yanking him down onto the ground before jumping on top and land, trying to land an elbow, but Stain would dodge out of the way before impaling Aizawa right in the stomach, causing Aizawa to leak out some blood, but Aizawa yanks the knife out, saying thanks kid for the tip, as he would then proceed to like, reveal that he had like a packet thing protecting him there. So the knife only went in a bit, not as much as you would think to the point where it would like hold him back too much, but now Aizawa's fighting at 80%. Right after that would happen, Aizawa would proceed to grab his scarf and then just hold both ends of it as he tosses it straight towards the direction of, of Stain, who this time expecting it would dodge out of the way, jumping up. But Aizawa seeing that, grabs Stain's leg from midair, tossing him down onto the ground as he would then kick Stain in the jaw, sending him flying as Stain would slowly get up with his blade and go to chop at the direction of Aizawa. But Aizawa using his scarf would proceed to grab the blade as if it uh, gr entangled the blade with a scarf, ripping it out of Stain's hands as Stain, before he could even react, would then proceed to get uppercutted right in the in the in the in the jaw as he gets sent flying up into the air. And then Stain uh, and then uh, Aizawa, sorry, follows that up with a spinning back kick as he would kick Stain onto the ground. Right as this happens, we would have the uh, the the alligator dude Spinner arrive, being like Stain. As from here, he quickly rushes in with this gigantic blade, Aizawa realizing that his his erasure quirk is going to be useless here, as he would go on to fight Spinner now, and this would be a more easier battle because obviously he doesn't have the tools that Stain has, and he's not exactly as gifted in close quarters combat as Stain, but this would pretty much lead to his ultimate defeat. And right after this would take place, we would zoom back into Izuku who would finally wake up with Koda right next to him. Um, or no, not next to him, but Izuku being alone. Izuku, after realizing that he had just finished fighting this guy, would begin to wonder what the point of these villains are. And he would think to himself that he doesn't want to find out. So, deciding that he's going to go help out his classmates, he would quickly make his way there. But this time, he's just a little beaten and battered, not exactly destroyed like he was in the original. And so, Izuku making his way towards the forest would eventually end up encountering Toki Yami and um and 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 uh duply armed right but the second that Izuku sees that Toki Yami is going crazy and he knows that Toki Yami has admiration for Izuku Izuku shoots a love beam at him causing Tokiyami and Dark Shadow to turn into stone leading to a gigantic statue of them there as he would ask duply arms what happened and he would proceed to explain what the what 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 the why am I getting so lost here? What the situation is. After hearing this and realizing that the darkness is definitely going to hurt Tokiyami, he would decide to undo the petrification the next day when the sun comes out, or a couple hours later, right? As he would say, for now, they need to continue looking for the rest of the students. As Izuku thinks to himself that this might be dangerous, but it's probably their best call. Because if, if he unpetrifies him, it's not like Dark Shadow went inside, so Dark Shadow's just still going to be on a rampage. Or what Izuku finally starts to realize is he could just get Totoro to help out and so that would be their main priority but before they can run into Todoroki and Bakugo they run into Suyu and Uraraka it would be in this moment that um Toga would finally get her first glimpse of Izuku and seeing him she instantly falls in love this time not exactly because of the fact that he's really attractive because I just don't see Toga doing that but because he's bloodied and beaten like a little bit like he has some blood uh, like going down his body Toga seeing this would quickly get distracted causing her Araka to be able to land a blow on her sending her flying back and Toga would say he's cute as she proceeds to then leave being like I don't feel like getting killed tonight as you know Izuku arriving there would basically ask what's going on they break it they brief him down on everything and you know like a bit shyly because they all like really like him as Izuku says, all right, that's good. Well, we have to go find Todoroki and Bakugo ASAP. As they would begin to question, why is that Izuku? And he would quickly go on to tell them why exactly that's the case. So eventually after doing a bit of running, they end up arriving where Bakugo and Todoroki are. Bakugo would be a bit beat up because they were facing Moonfish who originally ended up uh, giving them a lot more problems than they bargained for. And so 
all the group being finally uh, bunched up together would uh, be kind of distracted because they're all trying to figure out what's going on. Like, who are these villains? Why are they here? Is this the League of Villains? That's what they're all trying to figure out. But in the midst of all of this, Mr. Compress would end up taking Bakugo and like pretty much skedaddling out of there before any of them could be none the wiser. And Izuku would do his absolute best to keep up with him, but ultimately he would fail. And Izuku would just watch as Bakugo's eyes for the first time aren't looking at him with hate or like disgust or envy but he straight up just looked like he needed saving and after seeing this izuku just slams his fist into the ground being like damn it i couldn't save him as everybody catching up to him would be like it's okay izuku but before he could finish that a portal would open underneath the feet of izuku as it would be none other than Kurigiri who had teleported him out of there. Now, not only was Katsuki Bakugo gone, but so was Izuku Midoriya, and they have no clue where they were. But worst of all, Izuku had no clue where he was. Because unlike Bakugo who was taken to the League of Villains hideout, Izuku was taken directly to All for One. I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but every 30 minutes, I'm literally stopping and recording the story again on a separate day. Now, where we last left off, Izuku was now faced with the realization that he is standing face to face with the villain of all villains, all for one. And Izuku is completely caught off guard. Why is he here? Who is this guy? Obviously, he doesn't know that he's in front of the villain of all villains, but Izuku is just wondering one thing. Where is Bakugo? And it would be in this moment that All for One would make things very clear. With an ominous slow clap, he begins to get closer and closer to Izuku until finally he says he truly does look as good as they've been saying. As from here, Izuku would have a shiver go down his spine, but not because he was creeped out or he took that in a weird way, but just because he can feel so much power, so much darkness, so much just despair, just an aura of like overwhelmingness coming over him. As Izuku would say, who are you? Are you responsible for everything that's happened to us? Running from the USJ to now? As Alfron would say, and you pick things up quite quick. As he would then go on to say that the USJ wasn't really his plan. More or less, his successor. As he would then go on to explain to Izuku that his goal was never to interfere with the lives of some hero students. His goal was to take out the user of one for all as izuku would question what he's talking about but before he can even like begin asking more and more questions all for one would begin getting closer as suddenly a quirk like like entity thing would spring out of his hand gripping onto izuku so unbelievably tightly as izuku's like suit would literally be in tatters like he had just fought muscular he was very tired and he just wasn't in it to go for another fight again but right now he had to and so with all of his strength izuku would try to resist but it would be in this moment that he's that all for one would glow a red like aura as the grip would get tighter and tighter and tighter as izuku would squirm around trying to get out of this all for one would say not to move that this won't hurt a bit as suddenly, All For One goes on to place his hand on the face of Izuku as he would begin to drain Izuku of his quirk. And instantly, All For One would take three steps back, stumbling, as his mask would finally be taken off and Izuku would only see as All For One would literally become perfect. Unironically, All For One just took a page out of Cell's book and literally drained someone in order to get like some crazy power up. And it's not like he got like crazy strong or his quirks got amplified or anything like that. The thing is, Izuku's quirk literally was the thing that made him perfect, but eventually his body just kind of remained perfect because of the good habits that he ended up developing and the training and stuff like that. So it's not like Izuku's just suddenly going to become unattractive because he no longer has his quirk. He's still him. Not, the only thing is, he now lost the ability to turn others into stone, the petrification aspect of his quirk. And All For One knows one thing very well. This boy had the ability to turn All Might into stone. This was going to be so easy. Rather than having to create a bunch of Nomu and going into a battle that he honestly didn't know how many villains were going to be lost, he can simply take All Might out and most of the heroes out with this simple but yet effective quirk. All for one had to give it to Izuku. If not for this quirk, maybe the battle might have been interesting, but now that he has this, that definitely 
will not be the case. As this would be going down, eventually, the time would come around where after Izuku would have his drain, his quirk drain, he would pass out into unconsciousness after, you know, getting a glimpse of the brand new All for One with long, luscious hair. This dude's eyes are literally perfect. All for One basically is just a white haired version of like a perfected version of himself, like super, super attractive, uh, more muscular, more refined, perfect jawline. Just everything became so much better for All for One. And so now all for one was pretty much ready to take out all my with this perfection quirk all for one was thinking that he might not even need Shigaraki as a successor no longer and that that brought a huge smile to his face as this would happen Izuku would fast out like I said obviously a couple of times um and due to the nature of this Izuku would pretty much be unconscious for a couple of hours this would then eventually lead to Izuku waking up and all for one telling him that you know if he doesn't want to die he has one of two choices he can become a villain or he can become a villain he's giving him no other options and Izuku after hearing this would be like what makes you so sure I won't turn against you as all for one would simply say listen Izuku You've been out in the media for far too long. I know everything there is to know about you. Where your house is, what your parents do, what their cycles are. I know what time they'll be home. I know what time that they go to sleep. I know everything, young man. If you try to betray me, the second that that happens, I will send every villain at my disposal to destroy everything that you love. And Izuku hearing this would just think to himself that, he literally has no other choice. Now, Izuku was forced to stand next to All for One as All for One just smiled and told them that for now, he still needs to prove his loyalty by helping him by defeating All Might. And it would be in this moment that Izuku, after hearing that, would just think to himself that he doesn't know how in the world he's going to be helping. What's he going to do? But he would just know that he pretty much has no choice. He either helps or he dies and so what would pretty much take place is we eventually get the events of the heroes they're you know on the other side of things they're trying to like cover things up like the fact that literally two students were taken by the league of villains following the events of one student literally being killed ua would practically be on the brink of shutting down this time it's not just bad publicity this is bad for ua and All Might would be at the forefront of this, told about where to locate the League of Villains. So All Might and the rest of the heroes would arrive, taking down the League of Villains, Shigaraki, um, uh, the, the smoke guy, Kurigiri, Dabi, Magma, twi Twice, all of those villains essentially get taken down. And as this would happen, a black mist would appear that would pretty much blow everything away. All for one stepping out alongside Izuku, who is standing right next to him. And Bakugo watching all this take place would think to himself that he knew that that damn Izuku would be okay. But before he's able to do anything, Izuku would blitz towards the direction of Bakugo, smashing his fist into his stomach, knocking Bakugo out who was still stuck to a chair. As All Might wonders, what's the meaning of this? And these villains wonder this as well. But Izuku would rush at one of them trying to um trying to take it out but he would pretty much be restrained as all for one would say well your usefulness is kind of limited without your quirk at this point all for one would use his quirk to free zuku or his quirks right as um, he would proceed to help Izuku get out of the situation that he put himself in. And what would take place after this is just a sequence of events that I could honestly play out more like a movie, if I'm being honest. After this happens, Izuku would pretty much be shown that he is now a villain, which would lead All Might to a state of despair, being like, there's no way. And as this is happening, All For One would say, and one more thing, I don't need this anymore. All Might seeing All For One with this quirk would be absolutely stunned. And one thing that All For One has done to this quirk is not only make it so that love, attraction, admiration, and lust can activate it, but fear itself. And All For One in this moment felt a bit of fear towards All For, All for One if he's being honest. So All For One taking advantage of this will tell All Might that right now, he could turn him to stone at any given second, as All Might realizes that this young man's quirk was taken, and he must have done something in order to, st to have this all take place. 
as this would happen all might would turn towards the direction of izuku as he would grab him and literally like dip as far as he possibly can going on to pretty much inform izuku that he needs to take this piece of hair and eat it immediately from here izuku would go on to do just that as all might would smile and tell izuku that he's the hope of the future suddenly all might goes back into the battle going on to fight all for one as izuku would just be sitting there watching from a nearby building as all for one quickly turns all might into stone the second that he jumped back in and broadcast on the news all might would be shown being shattered into a million little pieces by all for one as izuku seeing this all take place would think to himself that it was all his fault a couple of hours later after just sitting there on the ground and pretty much falling to his knees izuku would realize that sparks of electricity were coursing through his veins as izuku realizes all might gave him his quirk now that izuku is aware of the fact that quirks can be stolen and given by the fact that all for one did it he now realizes all might gave him his quirk that's why he ate it that's why he was in such a hurry to get izuku to eat it in this moment of direness izuku didn't question it or go uh why he simply did what he was ordered to do and now izuku understands he's literally the last line of defense the last line of hope for this world he has to defeat all for one izuku after realizing that the weight of the world is quite literally on his shoulders would proceed to just sit there as eventually all for one would leave alongside shigaraki and the rest of the villains they had won and everybody saw it happen live after this would take place izuku would tell the heroes of his current situation how his previous quirk had been stolen and he was now left quirkless but oh my all Might gave them the last bit of hope. Izuku being the last person that he made contact with, he was the only choice that All Might could have made. And All Might knew that Izuku had the heart of a hero, so it didn't pain him too much to give the quirk to Izuku. But now, Izuku had to train and master a whole brand new quirk. But luckily for Izuku, his perfected body took to it almost like it was his own. Almost like this is the quirk that Izuku was meant to be born with. And so, Izuku was able to handle massive outputs of the quirk usage itself, already starting at a staggering 50%. But the difficult part was the fact that he now had to master seven other quirks alongside all, one for all that has the capability to shatter his body if he pushes it too far, experiencing his bones aching after throwing a bit too strong of a punch. After this stuff like this would come would pretty much be in the forefront of Izuku's life, Izuku would then begin to be trained by none other than Gran Torino, as Izuku's parents would be taken to a hero facility where they could be protected just to make sure that all for one's not able to get their hands on them. With them knowing that they have little less with them pretty much knowing that they don't have enough time. I was gonna say a week, but like realistically they don't know how much time they have until the villains do something drastic and with hero society knowing that their hero their their symbol of peace had been defeated crime rate goes through the roof the heroes don't even have time to set up meetings or talk about what's been going down like they're literally all way too busy having to deal with the consequences of all might's death massive amounts of rioting and crimes would take place and as izuku would be training he would be aware of the fact that as he's sitting here training having to take longer to master these new quirks other people are out there dying and izuku understands he needs to do this one way or the other many people would help him out with his training and he would have supplements to help him with the with how tired he is because izuku trains literally tireless all that izuku eats is lean meats and protein alongside water that's literally all he's able to consume he's also taking pills to pretty much help him with his recovery and like enhancement drugs in order to help him get even more muscular before the time can come so now izuku is like standing like an inch taller and his muscles are bulging better than ever before izuku didn't have to work on his fighting style this whole time it was literally just working on these quirks figuring out what these past vestiges of one for all are and with him meeting all might in the vestige world after this would happen izuku would pretty much go on to tell all might that he doesn't know if he's ready to defeat this guy i mean the last guy that he faced him he didn't have this quirk but he was literally unable to do a thing, but All Might tells him that last time he didn't have one for all and that the quirk on his was only effective because of fear. 
as Izuku realizes that now, not only does he have to watch out for these certain things, but that quirk has seemingly been evolved. Now Izuku's gonna have to wa watch out for other things, not to mention the fact that All for One has seemingly taken back the quirk of decay from Shigaraki, and, sh and, and All for One was currently forming a massive army of no moves and villains to boot. Stain was still at his side. Muscular, unfortunately, was out of the question for his side of things, right? But ultimately, All for One was just growing more and more in power. Growing his power by having experimentations done on him, making him even more of a of a greater foe just to make sure that nobody will be able to stand up to him after all all for one was completely unaware of what had happened to izuku plus he was now quirkless and there was no way that that old fool all might had enough time to give him the quirk not with the fact that right after izuku had ate it a gigantic burst of wind something that i didn't cover earlier literally destroyed the building that all might was at and all might had to climb out of the rubble screaming midoriya as izuku staying under the rubble to appear dead and pretty much play dead because of the fear he was feeling would have just stayed there under the rubble like falling to his knees and just crumbling and crying in tears all for one thinking that he had seemingly died which is why he mainly didn't go after his parents and so he would just give a, a quiet thank you to Izuku after having destroyed the symbol of peace, All oh Might. It'd be at this point that Izuku would now, after about two weeks of training, would think himself to be more than ready. He's now able to wield 65% of one for all, being about as strong as the Izuku that we currently have in the anime, um, being able to use gear shift, being able to use smoke screen, um, black whip is the one that he has a hard time controlling, float. All of these abilities are things that Izuku is now capable of using, and his hero costume would be a lot different than the one that he used to use before. Izuku, however, was not going to be facing off against one all for one alone due to the fact that everybody had seen this happen publicly every hero that had been impacted by all might's life in some way shape or form had come to help and one of those would be star and stripes another character that all for one knew that would probably be getting in his way sometime soon and so an all-out assault would be launched on one for all, on all for one right as he would be caught off guard completely. Many of the villains that went to face off against him would have been turned to stone immediately, with a bunch of them losing their lives after he would immediately use his decay quirk on the ground, destroying all of the statues. So hundreds, or no, not hundreds, but like 30 hero lives would be lost in that moment. And the other ones that didn't fear him were pretty dang close to feeling fear after that. So, as this would happen, Izuku would lunge towards the direction of All for One, grabbing him with Black Whip, shooting him into the air, as Star and Stripe jumping up there would punch All for One straight in the face, sending him flying back, as Izuku, in this moment, using Gear Shift, would prepare to rush in towards the direction of All for One to throw a massive kick right at his stomach. They would proceed to literally play, uh, play, play monkey in the middle with this guy, as they're tossing him back and forth, ragdolling him until finally izuku would see that laser beams were coming at their direction and she grabs them as she slams them into the body of all for one who mind you doesn't have super regeneration and followed by that would be his corpse pretty much like looking charred and burned as izuku comes flying in and just destroys everything that was left behind of all for one izuku from here would just be sitting there standing tall looking buff looking like like he's ready to do what he needs to do and he would thank star and stripes telling her that she was a huge help that he probably could have done that on her own and she would say he definitely could have she was just there to make sure that you know everything went smoothly as izuku would thank the rest of the heroes for their sacrifices which honestly weren't really needed as from here you know, we would have like a huge ceremony funeral for All Might in which many people of Japan would mourn and many people across the world would do so as well. However, an inauguration ceremony for the next symbol of peace would be held as Izuku would have his arms stretched up by Star and Stripes who would say, who would tell the world to get ready for the next symbol of peace, Izuku Midoriya, saying that All Might entrusted everything to him, including 
his quirk, as this news would shake everything. Now, not only was Izuku like the most handsome person in the world point blank period, but now Izuku was the strongest? Bro, this made everybody straight go nuts for this man. And one, and, and, and two, two days, no, 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 I, th I think, yeah, like, and, and like three months from this point, Izuku would finally have his final scene in this what if play out as Izuku would take the mic and take the stage at the biggest concert and festival of the year in Japan himself alongside with a Moy mask I guess you could say like let's just throw him in the story he's not like a hero this timeline around he's just like a really cool like singer slash celebrity or whatever um and both of them would perform the craziest little song Izuku's over there singing everybody's just going crazy and Izuku would smile thinking to himself about all thinking about all the people that have that have sacrificed in order to get them all to this point thanking all my his you know mini successor because at the end of the day all he did was give him the quirk izuku would wonder to himself how he's doing as suddenly this story would finally come to a close so ladies and gentlemen let me know what you guys thought about what if izuku was honestly i don't know the title yet all i know is that i had a blast covering this story obviously eventually the slice of life aspect of the story had to end and we were getting closer and closer to the big bad being taken care of some loose knots might not have been discussed such as overhaul and stuff like that but the reason for that is that those defeats would have ultimately been way too easy i mean let's be honest at that point it just becomes a villain of the week thing think the flash like he's gonna defeat him in one day right who cares so that is where i thought it was probably gonna be most appropriate to finish this story off but before you guys click off of the video a friend of mine has a couple of things to say hey you made it to the end of the video like it or die that wasn't the line kachan whatever